started. All right, everybody. Okay, this is uh, that's all right. Yeah, when it replays, at least people get what uh, we're doing. So, for those of you that have watched this before, this is going to be just as interesting. We're going to fish some of the same places, but we're going to fish some new spots that you've never seen because we figured out last week we do have some signal. So, um, we're going to go to active flatheads all the way to the monster spots. We're going to probably cover 25, 26 miles of river. And we're going to throw some donkey baits and some regular baits and some cut baits and some all kinds of baits into some flathead spots. So let's go. So we've got one live shad right here. All right, man. Here we go. Real Bill, Real Bill catfish in high town. Potomac River monsters. What's up, Epic? John boys, what's going on, buddy? It is a beautiful day out here. Dale Hayslip. Morning and morning. Jello, thank you. Jello says good luck. Dale says. Hey, what up, guys? Sorry, I'm uh, getting all antsy because we've been having to set up stuff. Welcome to the show. We've been setting things up and doing all that. We drove for an hour, hour and a half. We went and got some shad. We don't normally have shad, but we do today. So uh, I'm uh, getting all rigged up. Outdoors with Otis. Get them fish. Let's go. That's right, buddy. That is right. We got three thumbs up. We got 15 people in here. We're gonna go on a trip today, folks. Stick with us. We're gonna be up anchoring. We're gonna be driving. We're gonna be dropping the boat in. We're gonna switch the spots. Nice, lively gizzard shad. This thing's only about 20 minutes old. He's going into the down, into the pound down spot. Good luck, Jello. I caught a nice one last night. I've got a video up on my channel there, that little weigh-in. But uh, yeah, we popped a 38 pounder last night. It was an excellent time, good fight. That was my biggest one of the year so far. It was exciting. All right, Sean, if you can, dig that one 30 pound test out. <laughs> Dale Hayslip says he's going to take a nap, but not now. <laughs> Kevin Lambert fished on, he says. Here's a PC fun, Tim. Pussy fun. Lance, what's going on, man? Thanks for coming in. My guy, my cool guy. Outdoors with Otis, welcome. It's an absolutely beautiful day out here. Absolutely. Realville. Yeah, we we got the shad down here in the marina. Take down, take down. Get up here in the action. Get up here in the action, folks. Oh. Oh, well. Is he going to be a netter? Oh, I don't know. He's in that current, folks. Oh, yeah. Yep, he's a flipper. Just a little flipper. Fuck it, Hey, that's a flathead. Got you in frame here? Oh, yeah. Flathead I'm number watching, one. I'm watching that other rod. About ready to go down. Number one. See if we can get a light. Here you go. Flathead number one. You little booger. Epic zone, get no 
another takedown here, hopefully. Another takedown, let's go. Got, uh, let's see who's all in here. Realville, what's up? Otis, up, Joe man. Ziegler. Woohoo! Epic. One of these rods. Go down. Yeah, that's the only time I want to get is one of the rods page. That one, yeah. <laughs> that one came <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Joe Ziegler, hello, Epic and Sean. What's up, buddy? Fishing with Steve Mosley. What's up, buddy? Welcome, welcome to another installment of the Epic Catfish Show. We're not going after blues. There's no blues in, this, in these here waters, but we're going after the big green monsters. Green -headed I wet my whistle last night on a 38 pounder and I was Ooh. elated. Oh, it was a great fish. Beautiful fish. Strong fighter. We've only got one rod in the water. If you can get into that pack, I'm going to get some tough bait and throw it to the outside. Now, we, we did mark some flatheads. Out here is a washboard surface. It goes about one to two feet, sometimes two to three feet up, and it's pretty fast current. So what I have to do is I've got to take lighter line, put heavier weights on it, and cut bait, and see if I can't bounce it along here and see if we can pick off some of the flatheads that are out there. They're almost impossible to target by anchoring out there. For one, you get big giant boats going past you when you got your rods deployed, and everybody knows that's no good. Oh yeah. We've been uh, smashed. I mean, they come around this corner sometimes. Just wait, just wait. Oh, yeah, he's on. He's on. Woo! That's the only rod out there, too. Let me get this out. Woo oh, yeah. Oh, it does. I try not to drop the phone into the, into the water. About the same size, another little tight. All right, so we're on the active dinks. Let's see if we can scare up a monster next. Man, he's cut some water, buddy. You got my just pop off here. No, no, no. Kind of this nope. Oh, yeah, he's all right. Do that, go ahead and roll. This here looks like he's kind of stuck. Yeah. Looks a little toady. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Flathead number two. up a little bit. Look at this. Look at his tail. All bit up. Good. Good, good, good. Flathead number two. All right. Number two. <laughs> That's for has life. <laughs> all right. Let's see if we can make sure all the rods are in view. There we go. So, two two baits in the water the first ten minutes, and it they think so. I just heard a big boat and he's going in the channel side over. That's good. This is the shed, but it is a big river shine. Man, it's too light. Yeah, Moon. Okay. Yeah, Moon is in there. Uh, Glad to see you both. You guys have a great day fishing. I hope to see a big catfish. Yes, sir. All right, we're gonna see how they like these. Sorry, like that <laughs> that five ounces. That's fine. Whisper Dream says you like fishing bridge. Well, we like it because of the signal. The signal is impeccable here. We, we fish a lot of different places. We yeah. can't go live for a lot of them. Yeah. This is a nice, good signal here, guys. And we caught some giants here occasionally. Whisker Dream says, let's catch some big flatties. 
That's no doubt. Well, stick with us today because we're going to go to some places that have giant flathead. This has giant flathead too. It just depends if they're out or not. So we're going to see. We're going to take this bait and put it right along the footing of the bridge. Andrew Robinson, Epic and Sean, what's your thoughts on using rattles? Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't do a controlled dragon much, and I think they're good. I just set it down and it just got hammered in my hand. It did. Oh, yeah. oh look at this. Oh, yeah. Look at this, folks. I didn't even get the thing to the bottom. He didn't even get it to the bottom. Nope. It went. Boom. Oh my goodness. I don't know how good he's hooked either. He's not very big either. All right. What do we got here? A little bit bigger. Oh yeah. Nine, ten pounder maybe? He's hooked good. He's not coming off. You got it? He wasn't coming off. That fish literally took it as he put it down. He did. I, I mean, they are stacked in here, these little it fish. Like this, almost hit the bottom and it goes, boom, drops the rod like that and starts going out like they always awesome. do. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right. Another little Another pretty little flathead, let's go. Future monster right here, Got the here, lights buddy. on his back. Future monster. Hopefully this thing gets to like four or five feet long someday. Let's hope it makes it that long. Yeah. Oh yeah. Three baits, three flatheads. Awesome. Let's see what the people are saying. All right. What do you think they'll think about this? It's about a 10 inch shad. All right, everybody, welcome to the stream. Three baits down, three fish. The last one just took it right out of his hand as he was dropping it. Yep, Stilly. Hopefully Big Mama's there too, that's right. Well, they're moving, they're not just stationary. Because you don't normally catch one and then one will stay. Whisker Dream says he met us at Kent Con. Boom, boom, boom. There's the man, Agent Marillo, coming in with Agent the boom. Marillo. 1999, get Ooh. some, catch them up, boys. <laughs> Michael, thank oh, you very much. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. All right. Just hammered. Just hammered it. Just caved it. What do you got? Oh, it's a good one. Let me get this, this out of your way. This is a good one. This is a good one? Oh, yeah. Let me get this out of your way. Take all the trout now. That one's actually I got this. Oh, yeah. Agent Marilla with the 20 oh, bucks, man. Thank you very so much. This is this is bait number four. It wasn't in the water. 25 seconds. Got just smashed. You're gonna need a net on this one? Oh yeah. Alright. But just wait. We'll see. What do we got here, boy? Come on. On the big cat beaver rod. Oh yeah. Wasn't that Bob didn't Bob give you that one? It was. Fins and finds Bob Rod. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Woo! Oh yeah. Look at that band. Oh yeah. Dude, this this bite has not been like this all year. Oh that's nice. Oh yeah, that's good. Alright, I'm gonna put these guys down. Yep. Here, hand him to me. There you go. <laughs> that's that's what we like right there. How many baits is that? Uh, four baits. Four fish. And these are all, they've been on live shad? Uh, that one's live shad. Last one's on live shad. This one here hit her with a bench. Pretty good. Yeah, that's a good one. 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 Yeah, that
Yeah, I did. That was a hell of a take. All right, let's get a good look at this thing. Oh yeah, pretty decent fish. Sure hit it hard. Woo, and he's still hitting it hard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This, this is what we affectionately call the brown yellow. And this is a pretty common color on the Mississippi and the whole area throughout Illinois and Iowa. Every once in a while you get some, there's a lot more gold. But, uh, but this fish is uh, big brown, big muddy brown. All right, man. All right. All right. What is that? Three or four? How many we got? That's four flatheads and four baits within four minutes. No, I don't know how long we've been. Okay. There's Danimal, the Danimal Creations. So go, welcome, welcome. Welcome Danimal, thanks for coming in. 351, Stilly, Otis, Dale, the gang's all here. Let's catch some more. Four baits, four flatheads. Old Epic's gonna throw another bait down here in a second. For a while, we're gonna throw very many. No? Nope. We're gonna throw about three rods. Was that one straight down too? No, that one's out. But guess what? It moved from the current break over. I probably got a fish. That was that uh, creek chuck, that big river shiner. And once again, I'd like to thank Michael Marillo for the super chat of 1999. You guys Michael make our trip. Yeah, Matt, they make our trips possible, man. There's Avid. What's going on, buddy? Nice to see you made it in. Danimal says, hey, Sean, I finally caught a fish yesterday. Wow. Good on you, buddy. Danimal, I was watching you yesterday afternoon. Got me so pumped up. I went out and got a 38-pounder last night. 46 inches long, 38 pounds, and it was a fight. My little rods I use out there, oh, yeah. Drag peeling. What a monster. What do we do with the rod? I just caught that fish on. Avid's at work listening. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. 3.75, 18 inch largemouth on chicken. That was Danimal's catch. Chicken. All right, we're throwing the donkey bait now. Wildcat rigs, welcome, welcome. Donkey gill. Pretty much. I mean, it's not quite like dinner plate size, but it's pretty big. Thanks for coming through this area and waking us out, boat. They got the whole channel on the other side. heads to catch pretty much three in a row right down this bridge they're moving if they're located I oftentimes have to cast it but if I can put one in a stationary point and catch one catch another one catch another one that means they're traveling pretty good pretty good activity level for today Danny Stone caught him a monster turtle. I don't know if you all saw that, but he caught an alligator snapper, and that thing was basically. <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to get no 100 pounder there, Moon, but uh, we don't know. Out of any place on the planet that we fish, this is a good possibility. Not 
Eric B, welcome. Wildcat Rig says, tell Epic use full baits. Oh yeah. I have been using It's what he's been using, full baits. That, None do. of this small chunks of heads. <laughs> I get you. Every once in a while, there's, and there, there's no way to predict it, but every once in a while, we'll catch numbers of small fish, throw some cut bait, and catch the one or two giants that's here. For some reason, it happens on occasion. And you never know until you throw. Fifty-five people in the chat. Let's get them thumbs up going. Share it out. So far, it's been a lot of action. Let's go. Anybody knows anything about flathead fishing? If you can pop four flatheads on four four rigs to begin. It's, it's it's they're, great, they are by a great day already. Like I said, I I got into a monster last night and it's on. We had a really good uh, warm weather throughout this last week and I think uh, it shaped things up. We've had cooler water temperatures uh, for the most part for the last three or four weeks here and it's been up and now we're down at about normal pool and the water temperature is, oh my god, I knew it was going to be 75 degrees. 67 last week. 67 last week. This whole week warmed it up. I'm loving that. Lance McCougai says, I have about a 10-inch bullhead that has an appointment with a flathead tonight. He needs to get a checkup. Another pleasure boater coming by. It's going to be a busy day on the water today. It's gorgeous out here. We got lower humidity, sun all day. Comfortable river condition. I have to go back in that room, huh? <laughs> Get a couple more live fish? Yeah, I got a couple more live fish, but we only put one bluegill out so far. Well, two, that does like a full. I don't want to use up all our don't take here. Well, it's pretty good. Alright, now I'm going to take this down the way, down a piece, right next to the, to where the pylons go down in the water. Nice cast. I'm wishing I was fishing, but I gotta make barbecue for tomorrow. Yep. You're up, Sean, by the way. <laughs> yep, this is our first anchor, and uh, yeah, four baits down, four flatheads in the boat. We got three live baits. There he is, Sean. You can get ready. I just got a little bit of salt. Pretty good donkey bait. So. so what Sean's doing there when he raises that rod up is sometimes they'll come up and hit it. And then they'll just sort of sit there. And if there's too much tension, they won't really go anywhere. But what he's going to do is he's going to see it every time that fish was a bait. It felt like bait. See, then, then he knows his pretty big baits will, will jostle it pretty good. All right. Okay. He definitely got hit because there was a uh, back end to it earlier. And, you know, the propensity of flatheads to hit a bait, drag it back a little bit, put a little bit of pressure on it, and spit it is pretty big. Is that full up there, too? It is. You can reach in on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it. Look at that. That right there. I can see that. I don't even have to have my glasses. So go, Danimal. Okay. I'll tell you what. 
I am pretty thirsty. Though. Yeah. Why does it seem like we broke off anchor? There's no way. No. Okay. Good. Forward a little bit. Yeah. Hey, bud. No, just just my drink. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. You know, and, and this this spot is known for that. That's why we we don't even throw a bait until we start the live here, because. Generally, if you know kind of where they sit, they're, they're liable to bite right off the bat. And you may get a flurry of activity between one or two, and then you got to work for them. Still the bait? So we've, we've really only passed to about eh, maybe 25, 30 feet in this zone. And so before we leave this zone, I'm going to start reaching out. I'm going to start reaching out more right, reaching out down the pike here to see if we've got active fish that are just sort of laying, or even inactive fish just sort of laying around. See if we can't get one close enough for them to uh, get. Dude, I almost want to jig this thing up and down. Oh, I know. I know. That's awesome to have a bite in your hand like that. Oh my gosh, it was, it was crazy. There he is. That's a big fish. Big fish. Good fish. That one was a good fish. Oh yeah. Now, now that's, that's on the cut bait. That's why we throw the cut bait. He acts like a big fish, but out there is a lot of current. Yep. So what I'm going to do, Sean, is I'm going to put this here. You just battle him nice and slow. Here. That way the camera can see you, and I'm going to I'm going to take these rods in because you got a steering right. It goes right into that bridge. Yep. coming now. I don't know how big he is. He's built like a big fish. Hopefully he gets bigger. Run that camera now. He's coming. Yep. There he is. He looks beat up. Oh, did you see him? Yeah. Not super huge, huh? Boy, oh, he, oh, he's pretty decent. He is beat up. Oh, oh yeah. man. He's been now see, those are those more sedentary ones, so obviously he just bit it and moved sideways and went down in the current. Alright, I don't want to grab the line, but I don't want to grab the hook either. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Put him down. Number five. number five. In 35 minutes. Oh boy, he's been in the mouth of flatheads. Oh yeah. Alright, you go in the shade over there. <laughs> Let me see that phone. Watch it. on the tail there oh yeah he's been bit up he's beat up let's get him back let him go let him go, let him go. Oh, yeah. later buddy yeah Take red tail on it. it's a red tail cat oh this one's lagging On the shed head. So we're going to have to throw the shed head on the shed. Oh, there it is. There it was. 
There's Steve Lock 760. Welcome to the up, Steve Lock. Welcome to the stream. Jesse Outdoors Addiction. Welcome. Five baits down, five flatheads in the boat. First anchor. Thank you all for coming in. 68 people in here. Be sure and smash that thumbs up. Get to sharing it out. So far we're on a hot, hot bite, folks. What do? What's going on, Tony King? What's going on, buddy? First anchor, five baits down, five flatheads. Biggest being probably 12 pounds. Ryan, setting hooks and crossing eyes. Nice job, boys. Thank you, thank you. Wild Turkey, welcome in. Susquehanna Stan hey, Sean. is the Pick man. The All right. Yep, I hope you all stick with us today because we are going on the adventure. Like I said, if you go over and see my channel on there, I got a 38 pounder last night. It was a skunk buster because I've been getting my butt handed to me on the canal. Yeah, 46 inch, 38 pounds last night on live bluegill and he was a drag peeler. Muhammad, welcome, welcome. Yep, good to see you in here too, bud. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, the flatheads have been kind of elusive this spring. And old Tim and I have been, uh, we've been bashing the water for them. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can pop a giant tonight. Guerrero, what's going on? I, th I think we can. I think the water temperature just right, the timing's just right, and we have enough, and the, the water level, it, it was ridiculous for the last three weeks. Now it's gotten to the point where we can actually target this stuff. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it, it, I'm telling you, it, it was a great feeling. Yeah, you know, the, you know, the folks that were with me, they didn't get very good pictures of it, or else I put a nice thumbnail up there, but uh, that's all right. You should have seen the bugs. We turn our lights on. I wasn't prepared for that fish. I was actually checking baits, and I looked over, and they actually hollered at me, and my pole was doubled over, so it was a good time. It's like a team thing when we go to that canal like that. You should see our little operation we got. We got electric scooters, bicycle trailers, chairs, music. <laughs> we have a blast, absolute blast. Uh, Tim's actually the one that put me on it about seven, eight years ago. So him, him meeting me up there one day and give me a bunch of hooks and he sent me on a journey. We've had a lot of nice time fishing up there. It's been an absolute blast. It's only like 19 miles from my house. So thank you everybody for coming in. We're going to be uh, doing some traveling today. We're going to be, uh, we'll be putting the boat on the trailer and moving around a little bit. We started the bridge here because it was close to the bait source and a great signal to start out the live. Yeah, Danimal, I wish I could have got a good hold up on it, but I got a few good pictures off it. The fight was a great, it was a crazy nice fight. Robert James, Epic Tim and Sean, what's going on, buddy? Robert James. Yeah, Tony, that sounds good. I think the smallies are spawning right now up here. I had to go buy me a new little loose bait caster to get geared up. Yeah, start out like gangbusters, then it gets you all going, so you think you're expecting to see rods folded every second. Five baits down, five flatheads in the boat. I'm like, last time I was 30, 35 <laughs> minutes, and we're only going to stay in this spot another point. And we're going to move mid? Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's good to be live with you guys. We haven't done it in a while. What kind of bait we catch? Baby mama drama. We got uh, we got some little gizzard shad and uh, we got some uh, bluegills for bait. We even got a nice bonus small sucker in there for later. Uh, I think we're gonna when we get out of here, we're probably gonna go back and maybe scoop up a little bit more. I don't know. Uh, yeah. The hard thing is it's really difficult to keep a uh, big shad alive with your other bait. Now, if I had another one, that if another cooler like that, I could probably keep 20, 25. But I can't keep 50 bluegills and 25 shad. you got to do about five or six at a time. G-Style Fishing says the catfish and duo wrestling Tim and Sean versus the monster. Catfish who, who, who will win the day. Well, let's hope we do. You never know. Mission Flathead, first anchor to last. Welcome anybody coming in. We got 73 people up here in this chat. Smash that thumbs up. Share it out with your friends. 73 people on a Saturday. Hey, there's afternoon. a good guy right there cooking with Mike Chavez. Mike How you Chavez. doing, buddy? Mike has spent a lot of time watching us. We could spend a lot of time talking on here. Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming in, Mike. There's Mark Not Catfish Groupie. Let's go. Tell Mark, did, was Mark Not in here when it first started? No, nope, I think Mark Not just came in, but Mark, uh, five baits down, five flatheads in the boat. No monsters yet, but, uh,. That's some good action with flatheads. Anybody know anything about flathead fishing? If you can have five flatheads in a whole day sometimes. But we're with this guy. We'll definitely and, make the most of it. Yep. The river's shaping up. Uh, water temperatures have climbed uh, exponentially. We were at like 67 degrees last week, and I looked just now at 75 degree water temps. After a nice heat wave this week, we were all sweating our backs off. And, uh, I think it's got things shaped up. Monster flathead caught last night, and then, uh, yeah. Feeling good. Glad to be talking to you guys, having you guys in here. And once again, Mike Morello with the Super Chat, $20, man. Thank you, thank you. You know where that's going, in that bottomless pit of a tank. The fuel tank. <laughs> it's going into Joe Biden's pocket. All proceeds go to uh, Epic's. Uh, uh, we have a little credit card. Any, any uh, super chats go right on that credit card. It goes directly in our fuel tank. <laughs> no, oh my God, boom! That's Tony King right Tony now. Tony King with the boom 1999. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, he's got a little emoji, little, little me. You're amazing. Oh, Thanks, good. Tony. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome, guys. We try to get gas in Iowa when possible. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan says, yeah, all three gallons. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Truly appreciate it. Three, three gallons. This this is a jet on a, <laughs> like a 3,000 pound boat. It freaking <laughs> sucks the gas like nobody's fishing. Yeah, it's a quarter tank just to buzz around and look at stuff. Not so bad if you beeline it, but if you have to try to mark fish or look There's for old areas, catfish Cameron. Welcome in, bud. Cameron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you right. All right, fish. We've been deadbeats. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Five baits down, five flatheads in the boat. That's special. We're looking for the monster. Well, now I'm walking, baby. Walking. What's up, Cameron? Oh, yeah.
So I'm going to keep walking, keep walking, and then we're going to throw some cut bait in this very same spot. Let's see if we can clear up the mark. There you go. We're going to do something we don't normally do. What do you need? I am going to take this rod, put a heavy ass weight on it, and put those in front. Is it possible we've got some located right here at the very front? Yep. Now, it doesn't always happen, but every once in a while it does. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. I'm going to take this one and all over Explain to the folks at home a little bit about the current here. Yeah, the current here is. Uh, this this railroad uh, bridge here is actually it's it's all secure here on this wood here. It's a big huge I don't know what you call it, but uh, this it's whole big structure. Break, big the current yeah. Kind of comes to kitty corner. And yeah, it's in a kitty corner, and then uh, the current kind of pushes around the front of this bridge and creates a nice current break here. And not only that, it has three sections of current. It's got fast, medium, and fairly slow. So along the back, it's fairly slow. I was going to tell you, this is pretty neat, but also it's got a little pump to it, so when the when the water comes through through the bridge and around the bridge, there's a spot that actually has backflow, and we love backflow. That's why you see us pick up the rods a lot. A lot of the places that we fish, it doesn't have side eddy like this. The river's going this way on the top, and along the bottom, it's coming this way. So when you see that hit, oftentimes they're bringing them towards you. So that's why we're so hands-on with all of our flathead rods all the time. You know, I, I've heard people say, why is he picking up those rods? Why is he picking up those rods all the time? I'm like, well, because you have to. Yeah, yeah, Trestle, yeah. It, this is, it's kind of like, you can see through to the other side. It, it, this thing was built in 1899. It's actually a movable bridge here for the railroad. And they actually need to, uh, in a little while, close it so we can uh, get some shade. <laughs> There's Warren stock, a little late getting here, but let's go. Warren, we got we had five baits down Warren, earlier. We already went. Five consecutive <laughs> flatheads, bud. Okay. So let me let me spin up here. Yeah. Uh, Dale, no, you can't because that's the channel. We're actually lucky enough that uh, this this guy here, and we've known the guy up here for a while, and uh, he's pretty cool with us doing this. He knows that we're in a big safe boat, and uh, we know how to tie off the stuff and right. We know how to he, tie off. He could tell us. Yeah, we, we know how to tie off pretty well because you get waked out here, and it's, it's kind of a dangerous spot, really. I've literally had this end of the boat so high up on here and trying to hold it off before because like SS minnows would come by and just, just well, roll you on. G style epic, what do you do to combat bumping on structures on the boat getting beat up? Well I got a big well, industrial got size those... boat, but but I also do I've got a two by four mounted on here. And also if we if I fish this a lot, I've got big uh, I've got giant rollers. They're almost like uh, giant noodles that I, I mount to those. So I put one up there and one up down there so that we can anchor on anything we want to, including damn sidewalls and all kinds of crazy stuff. Because the one thing I don't like is I don't like seeing the spot I know flatheads are at and not be able to fish it. Uh, Captain Morgan, can you give me tips on fishing at night on Fort Loudon Lake, Tennessee? Absolutely not. <laughs> there is a lot of other folks in this yes, community that that's where they fish their home waters. Oh, tell them to check watch. out Pontoon Jody. Yep. Yep. Check out uh, even Catfish Dave. Catfish Dave. Uh, Justin Kayak catfishing. Um, uh, big Mike. Uh, he's not yeah, that. He's, he's not. He's not for long. But it's still. It's basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Current current breaks is pretty much the same story. Yep. When they're when they're Watch. running when they're running water yep. down there. Yep. And 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 look at Navionics because it's got a great Navionics uh, map, so you can tell where the deep spots are. You can tell tell where the uh, uh, the neck downs are and things like that. 
Is this a lively bait swimming sideways or what? Again, I'd like to thank the Super Chat donors, Tony King and Michael Marillo so far. Thank you very much. Dominic Hollis, what's going on? Howdy, howdy. I see what they were saying earlier. 20 bucks gives you about three. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. Ryan was saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seventy-three people tuning in. That's pretty good numbers. Let's go. Smash that thumbs up. Share it out. You can go fishing with me. Welcome you guys all on the boat today. We're going to go on an adventure. If you're sitting at home with nothing to do, hang with us. It's an absolutely beautiful day out here on the river. Ringo fishing. When I get off work today, I'm gonna go pitch a live bluegill around below a chain of rocks like a jig and swim bait. Yep. All right. A guy just got a 60, 70 pounder throwing around a swim bait down there yesterday. Yep. Yes, sir. We've been eyeballing that chain of rocks, buddy, and that looks absolutely awesome. Good luck with that, bud. Dale, you're right. I think uh, one of his biggest ones he's ever gotten here is just under 70 pounds. And that is a giant. Big bright yellow. Yeah, Mark, it's nice to be out. It's nice to see you guys. Nice to be out and doing this. Ryan's out catching bait right now. Good luck. I always get like crazy catching bait sometimes, I oh, get all involved in it, right, you know, you hardly look down and you got tons of G-Style says, epic, how you like those monster rod holders? Love them. The only thing I don't like is they're hard to adjust, and yeah, I'm getting used to it. Oh, hard fight, buddy. Here it comes. Oh, Ringo, Ringo, that's Ryan Inglesby. Hey, what's up, buddy? What's up, Inglesby? He changed his username. going downstream. Let's see here. Captain Morgan, what's the best location to fish at night during the spawn? There's a lot of different places. Places visit the same places you always fish. Yeah. Only half the fish are, are oh, doing what they're doing, so yeah, you got less of a chance, but you got to fish the same spot. You know, a guy would think you would need to fish shallow today, and we are going to do some flying of some shallower water with wood but I generally don't go less than about seven or eight feet and I don't go more than about 20 feet. Ryan Inglesby says the couch. <laughs> hey Ryan Inglesby, when's the uh, spawn usually hit, uh, that you've seen down there? Is it on right now? It's going to be in a couple weeks. As far as blue cats. Oh, T Med, yeah, chasing Moby Dick. I like that guy's channel, man. I like the adventures. He's a he's hardcore young man out there getting his ass beat up by mosquitoes and sitting in storms. Yeah, dude, chasing Moby Dick is an awesome channel. I like he uses spinning rods and drag peeling. Oh yeah, exciting stuff. I watch his stuff. I get yeah, I get excited.
Yep, if you're just coming in, five flatheads in the boat so far. No real monsters yet. But, uh, first thing. Early June to about July 5th or 6th, Ringo says, uh, Ryan Ringo says. Are you guys gonna go out on some shady bank somewhere? <laughs> the bugs are crazy. Oh, right here. Yep. Yeah. Team Med, I caught a big one last night, and uh, people were trying to film it. And as they're trying to run film, the bugs were so bad the camera wouldn't focus. It was focusing on all the mosquitoes flying around the lens. It's crazy. Good luck to you guys tonight. Oh, he's got a good series coming out. Five day trip. Nice. July 12th down there, Ryan Eaglesby says, when the post spawn bite really starts turning on. We are now in uh, flathead mode up here. There's no blue cats up there in this pool. And him and I have been hitting these waters and trying to scare up a monster. Tell them about the barge and why we'll never use power Oh yeah, well we had a shot at a, probably a fish 40 pounds or over earlier, a couple weeks ago. and. Uh, yeah, we were fishing some power line and it brushed the uh, barge down there and snapped the clean off. Like, like that. Like hey, the there's company. Big Mike. What's up, oh, Big, Big Mike? Mike? There's Jeremy, Jeremy's Tournament Cats. Welcome in. We got five little fighters in the boat so far. We are just past the hour of suck and uh, we've, we're doing pretty well so far. This is our first anchor. <laughs> We're in full spawn here, going for tuned up channels that have been jumping out of the water like a bass. <laughs> I actually caught a two pound channel cat last night on a, uh, on a small crappie live. Live crappie, it's crazy. And he swallowed it down like a champ. There's Air Run, what's up? Hey Epic, caught another blue uh, flathead last night. Uh, that makes a 50, makes four in my life. Nice. Another big flathead is probably what he wanted to say. Yellow Dog 78 says, uh, man, I've been waiting on a new video. Yeah. I know. Well, I been... the man has been so busy, he cannot get in the studio. It's kind of sad, really, because I've got a bunch of stuff filmed, uh, but I can't get to it. That's where the crop is. I said it was a blue flathead. Blue flathead? Yeah, big blue flathead. Mark not, donkey drinks will be full. Yeah. That's for later. Yeah, Captain Morgan, I used floats last night. Actually, uh, Epic won some uh, the Patriot Drink Ghost Bobbers. And he gave them to me, and I took them out last night. We don't use them on this river because most of the spots are fish. Pretty much too much current for that kind of stuff. But yeah, the folks, the folks do work. We caught some of our biggest fish on that canal in the slack of the waters. 
on on there. Like, so yeah, check out the picture of James, those bottles and me. They light up. It, it, it looks like a little uh, Chinese lantern floating around down there. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. minutes and I think we're going to move down. Dreams. I had a great flathead spot for Jody's challenge Thursday, but got run off by bad storm. That sucks. Man. I've actually stayed out in some of those bad storms, and it's miserable. Sometimes it pays off after the storm passes. A guy can get into a nice fit. And he says the other one got hit too at some point. That one? Dale said, yeah. G-Style says, how long do those brims stay alive in that current? In the current out here. Definitely. Out here in the current, yeah. Until they get drilled. They're laying nice and snug down there on the bottom. Doing their little thing. Dugger, what's going on, buddy? Greetings, Earthling, he says. Dugger. Always. Good to see you. Five flatheads, 35 minutes, five days. Now it's slowed down a little bit. 73. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, Jeremy turned the cat says, let's go catch the hit. Dude, just got hit right in the hand. So, boom, but he ain't fooling anymore. He says, I dare you to break those rod holders. He says, the cat fish. Yeah. He got hit. Boom! Jeremy turned the cat. Thank you, thank you. What's Mr. Flathead doing some donations? I can't see the number. I think it's 9.99. I can't see the, the number. Thank you very much, buddy. Yeah. Woo. Thank you. We will fish for gas. <laughs> right. Yeah, 
Truly appreciate it. Thank you. Put his dreams with the wife on fish for D-Field, the ladies tournament at the first of the month. Nice. He ended up second place. So, oh, Freddie's daughter. Willow, welcome, welcome. Again, thank you, Jeremy, Kermit Cat, Michael Murillo, Tony King. Thanks for the people for coming here, right? This stuff like that, you got to make sure that you leave enough slack in your lines. And uh, you know, Tim's pretty much an expert on that by now, he's been doing that for years. We've had some big boats, too tight and it's too dangerous. Yep, you can't. Yep. He's been taking me, I'm learning, I'm learning how to tie off. There's Jerry, Park the Suits. What's up? We got five flat heads in the boat so far, buddy. They're biting on uh, live shad, cut shad, live bluegill. So far, this morning has been a pretty good bite. Big John, hey everyone, welcome in. 73 people, when you're coming in, smash that thumbs up, share it out. We can go fishing with Epic Catfish today. We're going to go on a little journey today. Hopefully we can get it. Mostly keep service where we're going. Yeah, let's just hope we can get service. Yeah. You know, our service is pretty good with bluebird skies. Yeah, I think, as soon as uh, it's cloudy, it's not very good. I think big barge and Isla barge should be fine. Yeah. Our first anchor, spot number one. Five flatheads, biggest being about 12 pounds. He had one take it before he could even get it put on the dock earlier. Tina Knott. Tina Knott. Hi, Epic and Sean. She gets out the boom. Oh, that's no, that's from MR Duggar. That's MR Duggar. Duggar. Awesome, buddy. For cocktails. Mark Knott's mom. Welcome. Yeah, I'm looking at it on here. I can barely see it, but yeah, it's kind of smashed. Thanks, Duggar. All proceeds will go to gas. <laughs> uh, I got another one, too. Robert James with the 1999 boom. Mr. Duggar, Robert James, Jeremy's tournament cast, right. Tony King. Everybody doing all these? We're, we're, we're going to shake this up. We're going to go right to the belly of this thing and throw in a little slower current. See if we got some fish built up. All right. 
gonna make a move. I'm gonna keep this thing from blowing over here. How is the wind noise on that thing? It's a little bit. It's not bad. I can hear it. Thank you guys again for the super chats. It goes directly to the epic card that we slide to be able to go do this stuff. Really helps out. y'all know that Epic uses snap swivels and he's able to detach these bluegills off that snap swivel and throw them back in the cooler where they can stay nice and aerated and cool and that's how we can serve our bait a lot of times. Yep, because you can't double hook them because they just don't do that. Nope. I mean, you can, but it sucks. And anybody wants to question the snap swivel thing, there's uh, plenty of evidence out there. This guy's caught some of the biggest biggest catfish in North America on the same rig. Yep. Snap swivel is even smaller than we're using right now. Yep. 80 pound leader line with an overhand loop knot snap swivel. And when him and I are on the uh, go, we're detaching these things, throwing them in the cooler, and then when we go to our next anchor, we're snatching them out, redeploying them the same way. Somebody said that rod got a bite. Got a bite. Yeah, that did get bit up. Mid Tennessee hog catcher 214, welcome. NJ fishing maniac, welcome. Ernie the hog snatcher. Welcome in, man. <laughs> Remember I told you got bit? Yeah, look at this freight up. He's worth where It's really hard to see on film, but yeah. you can see it. The scales are removed on a couple of spots, but he'll still he'll, he'll still attract it. Five flat heads in the boat so far. We landed a 38 pounder last night. 46 inch 38 pound beast last night, drag polar. We are looking for a monster today, tonight. Stick with us. We're on the hunt with epic catfish out here. Dude, this one had a little fish tank size fish. Yep. I suffocated it. I had my Patriot James bobber last night. I'm like, wow, that's a lively bluegill. <laughs> Come to find out at the end of the night, I go reel him up, and there is whole, all the scales are missing on his butt. They're back. So he had a fish tank sized uh, flathead uh, sucking on his tail. I'm missing anybody. Wild Turkey, what's up? Thank you for coming in. Johnny Catfish, yes sir, get him boys, he says. Uh, who else? G-Style. I like that rig. Drop it. What's the hook size for the live bait? What do you use? Like 7 off? It's a beautiful day on the Mississippi River. Water temps are 75, almost 76 degree water temps. That's almost a 10 degree jump from last week. Uh, the water levels are down to where uh, it's about normal. And every catfish is exciting. <laughs> watch it, watch it, watch it. Yeah, Alright. Always got to be on the edge of disaster. There's Danny Stone. You boys are getting a head start on me, no fair. Yeah, Danny, we got out here, we got bait. We anchored up, he put five baits down and five flat heads in the boat. He had one even take down right out of his hand. The biggest being like 12 pounds. We are on the search for a monster all day into the night. 
We're gonna try to stay up with Danny Stone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I got off. The, I got home last night. I got home last night at one o'clock in the morning. I had a little. Uh, did I hear scuba tanks falling over? <laughs> yeah. So far, it's been an active little bite here. Get an extra hundred cool folks for that. Giddy up, boy. PX Tiger with a boom. Ten dollars. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for everybody's generosity today so far. I don't wear uh, the jamming bud. <laughs> I 
I got my Lulu lemons. I, I sleep in my yoga pants, y'all. Nice to be fishing live with you guys again. Yeah, dude. What's oh, Ryan Ingles be sending me pictures of a 200 pounder or what? Or there's an 80 pound flat down that lane. fishing a retractable railroad bridge that was built in 1899. Um, it's kind of off-centered in the center of the channel out here, and it's kind of a great current break here. You know, Epic Catfish has been fishing it on and off for a long time. This is actually our second anchor on the same thing, and I believe we have five flatheads in the boat. We've had enough super chats now, we can almost make it home. <laughs> That's going to get us about half now. I'll go over there to that uh, Iowa Casey's over there and get some of that corn fuel in there. I've been putting it in, it doesn't seem like it. You know, my truck gets crap gas mileage anyway. I'm still averaging like normal, 16 yeah. every day. It's not bad. Can tell you know when I pull on this boat. Alright, 20 minutes and we go down the river. 20 minutes, folks. 20 minutes. And then we're gonna go slide this big beast. Are you gonna throw any nets in the Yeah we will. Yeah. Well, you should know. 
Agent Marillo. My heroes are gonna make it home. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make it home now. Yes, we can make it home. 1999. Let's go. He says show us number six. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mike. That's two Pipper Cats today, my Mr. Agent Marillo. Thank you, thank you. Hell, I might even buy some injector cleaner to put in my tank now. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not so good. For the most part. G-Style Fishing says Epic shows his age when he can talk with a cigarette in his mouth. He talks better with it in his mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got the camera. Get him up there. Lead him up a little bit. <laughs> what did Agent Morello say? Show us number Here's two. number five, Michael. This is number six. Number six? Yeah. That is number six. I'm losing count already. Huh? It is number six. It's number six. Yeah, he did. That's what he said, too. Yeah. Okay. I'm already losing count, I said. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. I couldn't see. Oh, I think he's in the bottom lip. Bottom lip? I think. In the net. Yeah, in the net. It's gonna be epic. In the Hydra Web 80, thanks to uh, a super chatter, Michael Cashmore. Yes. He saw us struggling one night and got us that net. Thank you, Michael Cashmore. If you're out there, you guys make this possible. Thanks for coming along. These are these new, new ripping lifts. They are Definitely. nice. They are pretty nice. Those things just want to grab onto things. Yeah. All beautiful. Yeah. He's a pretty good looking fish. Nice. All right. All right, everybody. Flathead number a little bounce. Now, we just need to catch one that three of my hands fit in. Real good. Oh, yeah. All right. Back to the depths. See you later, buddy. Want to film it? Yeah. Hang on down a little. A little more, a little more. Oh, yeah. Awesome. 
Alright, buddy. Alright, you're up. Hey. I see him. That's a piece of cut bait and it's probably a flathead. And it's out there a long way. It goes down with it. Just reel back, I mean, go back far. Spitty, spitty. All right, flathead number six. Seven's on the line. Not hooked yet, but he's there. I know. I need to get my bag attached to it. Alright. What did you guys do? You took a fall. Let's just say orientation is locked. There it is. Alright, a little breezy out here. I gotta get a little, get my bag up here so. I forgot my little bungees in the car. Usually, I'll do that. See that? They're a perfect little piece of, uh, look at this, little Velcro loop goes right around it. All right. Flathers are real active. They'll come out of this bridge and hang out out here. But right now, all we're finding is some active fish. And fish active enough to bite that are real tight to the bridge. So that tells me they're coming out, and trying to go back in, coming out, laying out there for a little bit, maybe moving up and down this base of this bridge instead of being located out here. When they're located out here, look out. Alright, Jason Lamb, what's going on, man? Hey, nice. Actually, I would say that. Uh, yeah, you see. Silo with my yeah, wife. epic. Here, yeah, Tim met Jason at the silo. John Boy says Tim's trying to build dance those fish in.
Now you guys keep an eye out. As the YouTubers start coming to this bridge, you'll know. They've been watching us. <laughs> That has fished it for that long. Wayne Kirby, thanks for coming in. 205 Wild Action, what's up? 70 people in here, 70 lucky people riding with Epic Catfish today. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> you guys are lucky. <laughs> We're lucky to have you guys. Thanks for all the super chats. Thanks for watching our dumb antics. Agent Marillo bringing the good luck and the dough. Thank you, man. All right, 10 minutes. I hope none of you got hurt on that fall we just had with the <laughs> But yeah, see that thing? This little, that's supposed to be a rod holder. Yeah. Awesome. catch another fish when it comes to Yeah, you just break away it. Danny Stone says these boys are going to have 50 fish before I even get to the water. <laughs> so yeah, but then you're going to get there and catch a 70 on your 16 foot rod. Yeah. That, and then probably a 60 pound alligator snapper. And <laughs> Danny's out in the wild doing this shit. Danny's fish are so big and so mean, he has to carry a side on them. Danny's the most, one of the most outstanding guys in the Catfish community, personality all day. Y'all gotta got tune in for Danny Stone stuff. I watch him, super excited when I see him. Solo, Texan Adventures. Hello, Epic Sean and everyone. What's the count? The count is now six flatheads. We are on our second anchor, and the bite's pretty good. We're looking for that giant, you know that. Thanks, Mark Knott. <laughs> Peace Dog says, when you hook a catfish in a hole, do you think a new catfish takes a spot? At this time of year, yeah. It may take a little bit of time. But yeah. Yeah, yeah there, there's a lot of competition for that spot. Let's just say a big flat is sitting in one little location. This this area doesn't have competition like that. Uh, this is basically a gathering of flatheads because of the current and the cover. Uh, but when you have a, a an individual piece of wood cover, say it's a tree, say it's I don't care what it is, a, a sunken car, a refrigerator, whatever, the big ones uh, will dominate it. And as soon as you basically hook one big one. The other perimeter fish that want to be there can move in. Doesn't always happen, but it has happened several times where it's the biggest, then the second biggest, then the third biggest on the very same, you know, three foot square that you throw it in. What can we uh, look forward to on our next anchor? What are we going to be possibly looking at? We are probably going to go and fish the Sunken Barge Graveyard. So let's hope they're, they're stacked up in there. Uh, I, I think there's a good, distinct possibility that there's plenty of fish. Let's just hope they maintain activity level. Let's hope they're not done for the day, and then they're going to spark up back up again. Here in a little while, we're going to put this thing on the trailer, and we're going to be heading to the Sunken Old Barge Graveyard over there. Down river away. There's a series of about five sunken barges in a current break situation that at times <coughs> holds big flat in. It usually holds numbers, but at times will hold really big. Johnny Catfish says, What's the outside temp here? Well, I think it's supposed to be about 85 today. Yeah. Uh, as you can tell, the viewpoint's pretty low. Uh, it's nice. It's a, actually a beautiful day out here on the water. We got a slight breeze coming out of the north. Water temperatures at uh, 68 degrees or 60. No, 70. Or 76 degrees. I think. Yeah, so it's shaped up to be uh, 
beneficial for the for the bite here this, this whole weekend. Huh? Yeah. It was 100 degrees or a couple of days. I I, we wish we could have gotten out during the 100 degree warm up. Yeah. Because there was probably three or four days that would have been a hot bite, but we both had to well, work. Plus, yeah, and I I get off work and I I was kicking my butt because I didn't go. But you go home and you take a shower and you sit in the air conditioner for a minute. You're like, I don't want to go back out there, dude. So dude creeps for 200 yards till he gets right next to it, then he lights it up. <laughs> Danny Stone just put new batteries in the Epic Light. Nice. It's going to stand out tonight, he nice, said. Nice, nice, nice. Well, Danny, yeah, I used my, I had my Epic Light last night on uh, on one of my rods. I had the Epic Lights, and then uh, he gave me uh, Patriot James bobbers that he won on one of you guys' uh, lives. And, uh, yeah. yeah, we were all decked out with lights down there. Those lights are awesome. Hey, there's Stan 3. What's going on, buddy? We're out here doing a little flathead fishing. We got a great start to the day. Six flatheads boated. We're hunting for a monster. We're going to do this well into the night. We're going to try to keep you guys with us when we go. I think we got pretty good service everywhere we're going to go. If not, you all have to bear with us, but uh, we're, we're looking to fill a tank on tonight. Big one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Stan 3, this is an excellent service area and a high population of flatheads. There might not be a lot of big ones up here right now, but it's action, man. You can get six flatheads in your first anchor, so you know about that. That's good. This is six flatheads in one anchor. I mean, it happens. Danny Stone says, you get used to those epic lights, then when you don't have them, it just sucks. You're damn right, it does. When I first started fishing in the dark, and I always say, I don't want to shine lights on the water, the canal I'm fishing going at. So I, I used to take a little flashlight and I'd pop it up and fish it, trying to get the pole and do all this now. Man, all these new lights and stuff they got out nowadays make things a lot better. Be able to keep an eye on your rods and see what your rods doing at all times. No more imaginary bites. Yeah, and when you see that, you can see those little bites that might rob your bait, might pull your bluegill. Or having an idea of what's going on with your bait. Yeah. And then finally, and they only put a little bit of rod yep. on Be able to keep those things that revolutionize that because you can really keep them. Pay attention to your rods at night in the complete it's a tool, it's definitely yeah. a tool. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't scare me, it doesn't send light on the water. Dude, I about shit my pants when I see one of my lights go off and then it really sits over in the dark. And the <laughs> boy. Yeah, I have those lights go off. Yeah, well, turkey, you know. We've had guys come around the end of this, this uh, bridge before and uh, drop the throttle, drop the throttle down and have the feet in front of their Gilligan boat smash down and have three foot weights smashing us against this thing. But there isn't any way to anchor on it very well. No, you can't because uh, when a barge goes through it completely reverses the current and it'll turn you backwards. Yep. Now I suppose if we had spot lock and all that good stuff, but I'm a lot of super cats away from spot lock. <laughs> Like you know. 68 people in here, 45 thumbs up, let's get that number up, share it out, come fishing with other catfish all day into the night. We're going to try to get a monster in the boat for you guys. Our first anchor up here at this bridge, successful six flatheads, biting on live bait, cut bait, shad and bluegill. Oh! Yep. Oh, yeah. That's what mine look like. That, that, I know, and that, that's definitely flathead. Look, oh, yeah. Got bruise one side, none yep. on the other. Yep. Uh, it is. 
Just a little bit bigger than a fish aquarium one time they nibbled on that, but I don't think so. No, bigger? I don't know. It's a big I'm not saying it's huge, yeah. but you know, at least a good enough grip where you can get one hand in it. Michael Marillo. <laughs> Boom! Thank you. With oh ten dollars. This is for the spot lock fun. You got it hurt somewhere. <laughs> damn right. <laughs> oh my God. Michael, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh wow, that's all awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boom, boom, boom. That's why I say catfish people are the greatest yeah. people on the planet. Yeah. There is no better. As far as the fishing is You know, I've got to hang out with Michael a little bit here and there, and uh, he seems like a hell of a nice guy. If he's not, that's a hell of an ass. <laughs> great people, great people. We all hanging out at Cat County KC. Yes, sir, in October. Hope, oh my God. KC is a lot of fun. I have not been invited yet, though, so showing up. Yeah, right. We'll see what happens. Even if I'm not speaking, we'll still do Yeah. Yeah, we're going to bring our lawn chairs next time and we can, so we can all sit down and relax. And Cat Con is definitely something that everyone should experience. If you can get to Cat Con, it's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of awesome people. I mean, <laughs> it's an absolute blast. There's so many people that I saw at the Louisville that I didn't really get the time to meet, and that's regrettable, but uh, yeah, kind of get caught up in the moment and get busy and doing this and that. Isaiah Skirvin says, I just watched the video of the giant blue. Wasn't that <laughs> thing ridiculous? Yeah. That's one of the biggest blue cats I've ever seen on film. The thing was an absolute giant. Almost 60 inches and 43 girth or something like that. Was it? Oh yeah, its tail was nibbled off. Yeah. Hey, there's some buddies getting moon eye right down there in that current break, I bet. Ryan, that's our catfish buddy. He's got a catfish on the side of his boat. Moving catfish. Yeah, Steve Mosley, it was awesome. Cat Con is fun, but I'm gonna tell you what the Kansas City one, if you can make it to that, uh, it's a, it, the downtown, everything's right within walking distance. The restaurants, you sit and eat with, with everybody, and uh, oh, it was an absolute blast too. Yeah, even if we're not even invited, he's not gonna speak or whatever. We're still gonna pop over. Can't get rid of us now. Yep. Yep. If he doesn't get invited, if he doesn't get invited, probably the other part of that rap from the other night on the Mississippi River Rat Show. Caught a big pipe of some sort. <laughs> we want to drop another phone in the river. How you guys all doing? Here with our grocery rack that we got the other night. Yeah. Conduit showed up with a whole bunch of wire in it. Hey, there's copper in that. Yep. Hey. Hey. All right, you man. Uh -huh. All right. All right, everybody. Time to make a move. Oh boy. Oh boy, what do we got here? 
He's up on playing really good. Warren stock, I thought you might have a new PP rack. That was a nice rack, though. I just put that uh, that conduit right there uh, with that rack. Yeah, man. Make sure we don't bash anything that's important. Dude, this thing just worked awesome. Yeah. Rocking on that bag. Because that thing was trying to tip over. I know. Ha <laughs> ha! We're getting good at this shit. <laughs> Now, since we have time, we could fish that wink dike if I mark a big fish. Just want to go throw for some bait. Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna go on a little ride. I'm gonna bring you down here. get my shit ready to travel. I got a lot of things.
right, everybody. This spot doesn't always hold flat. But when it does, I like to stop because I have pulled up here and caught 40 and 50 pounders. Sometimes these catch teams or even dinkers, but I marked one big fish or two big fish side by side. Now, I would doubt that they're flathead side by side, so I'm going to assume that it's one giant flathead. Let's see if we'll you know, find it. I really was kind of hoping I didn't mark any big fish because I already took the sinkers off. Got a little wind noise probably, but we'll have to deal with it. Breeze feels nice. riprap area that ends, it kind of goes along, it's fairly shallow water, and then it dumps down in about 14, 15 foot. And at the precipice of where that first drop came, I marked some pretty donkey fish, or at least one, if not two. It's really hard to mark flatheads, but I seem to think that they're flatheads because there's only one way to find them. I think precipice means the top. No. No? The bottom. The, the precipice does mean the top, or the bottom, depending. One of the two is either Davis or Chow, so I don't know. Never thrown any bait down, so we'll take 15 minutes to go. We're looking for a quick bite. A quick box Or just a flat in Yes, sir. Do you mark one? Trying to get on target them. Now I am just up somewhere right there. <laughs> well, I'm Isaiah Sturman says, I'm more of a bass fisherman. My dad's had me out on the river here. Big blues and my biggest is 32. I caught him using live goldfish. Well, you find the bait fish in your area, whatever swims in that water, get your big, big hook, big, big weight. Cut that uh, live or live fish head off and uh, throw it out there. Giant, giant bait. Yeah, matching the hatch. Do we have enough phone to be able to reach that? Yeah. Not oh, good. Did I read that? No. Now, if I would have chose to do this over again, I would be almost on the back. Because if we, if we don't have the greatest angle on it, I don't know if I'm here. So I'm trying to kind of sideways hang on to this. But I am going to take some and throw it underneath the bar. Well, that lag is going to Oh, you get behind the cat, you got to be tough.
<laughs> Brian D, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Brian D says, uh, what are y'all two old men doing out there without me? <laughs> Don't have a bunch of fun. Tom uh, hey, Epic and Sean crushed them. Oh, yeah. We're going to try to get a monster in here. Yeah, Tiger, I want to get the cat come but my cheeky bucket tickets, man. I need all my funds for a minute. I'll bet. I think I'm going to have to crack into an egg with some hot sauce for a minute. Oh, right in the shade. See that? Yeah. Perfect. Shallow, fall too shallow, and finally it's all deep enough so it's got to be right. I'm going to jump in here. We've got the farm hardball there. We're here, that might be. Our boiled eggs, we got some taco sauce, we got some Taco Bell fire. Oh, I missed him, dude. Gosh, I knew he was gonna get I just felt him. Dang it. All right, everybody. This number one. Let's now we and put it down here. Pretty good take down, was it? Over Taco Bell fire sauce on boiled eggs is fire. Oh my god, that's so good. Oh yeah. On a mission, folks. 
He's on. He's on. Fish on. What do you want to do with him? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, that's no good! Look at this beast! Hey Mark, it's all on dumb draw! Oh yeah, that's a nice one! Alright, so that's a risky take with some cut Oh yeah! That's impressive! Now I don't feel so bad about missing that other fish. Sorry what it was. Yep. All right, it's a drum, all right. Beautiful. You can hear? Nope. He's not even broken. Look at the puppy head on that. <laughs> if we were in blue country. <laughs> this might be bait in blue cat country, but. Mr. Drum, you're lucky we're not in blue here. cat country. Yep, that's right. All right, here he goes. Lion fish number one. Right on. All right, all right. Never know. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Big drummy. Big drummy. Alright, I'm gonna try to get the shade on this short one. Oh my god. You act like you've done that. Still got 70 people in here. Well, Turkey says that cat shaved his whiskers this morning. <laughs> he was pretty clean shaven. Cut the stone out of his head, he says, Thomas Carroll. Uncle G, what's up? What's going on, buddy? Ain't got no time for that. Ain't nobody got no time for that. Well, Turkey says, I can hear it now. Everything was good with the bridge, but Epic pulled the main structure out with his fishing rod. They probably got no power now. Of course, the river will be closed until the divers can repair the damage. Yep. Yes, sir. We're going to use the current pull that underneath the barge about almost 40 feet. one in here now people are dropping out that uh -oh. drum that sent people that away drum just... I can't I don't know what I'm looking at what the heck <laughs> Michael Murillo again with the boom oh my goodness. 
I played my drum for him, pum 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 pum. I played my best for him, pum 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 pum. And he smiled at me. Oh, oh, oh boy, look at that. Oh Lord, have mercy. What is that? Look at this thing. Eight little water at it. What the? Uh, just sit right back and you hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip. <laughs> Look at the wakes on that thing. Oh, boy. Oh, Lord, he's plowing. Glad we moved off the bridge. Michael, thank you again. Our next, our next live trip will be... Funded by Mike Marillo and all the generosity of everyone in here with the Super Chat. It looks like uh, Uncle G, too, with the boom. Ditto. He sent the $10. Thanks, Uncle G. My God, we're going to make it home, and we might be able to come back out again. <laughs> My wife did say that I don't have to go to the Father's Day thing. It's Father's Day. I know, that's what I mean. I don't have to go to it. All right. My Father's Day is I get to go fish. Nice. Thank you again, Uncle Chief, Mike Marillo, Tony King, everyone who super chatted. I don't have that information here in front of me. Coast Guard for epic tearing down trestles. Michael Merlis says, tell that boat they're dragging too fast. Yeah, they were. Indeed. You know how much fuel it takes to get that thing up on plane? There is no plane. Though. There's no plane? No plane. No. no. It's just all on the all city. All civil. How many, how many gallons of tanks do you think that's standard? You think they got 200, 300 gallons? Five. Really? Yeah. Dude, those big yachts, those big giant yachts that my brother works on, in Donald Trump's gas prices, it costs a quarter million dollars. So, so now it's a half a million dollars. Looks like I'm getting behind in the chat again on this way. Must be my Walmart thing. No, it's the back of the scissors. No, I'm still not. It's so damn bright out here, I can't see. Got to reboot the YouTube. 74 watching it says now. Mission flag. It's 2.30, we're going to stop in this spot in about five minutes. Is this possible if those are just a couple of big dumb drums? Big drumming. This, they were, this is definitely a flat spot, but it is not. It's, it's, a, it's a 15 minute, maybe you'll catch a fish, maybe you won't. Jeff's fishing in the sunshine was up, Epic. What's happening? What's happening? i got to make sure to pay attention to this one, not that one.
Whatever all she's got. That's right. What a beautiful day out here, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Right here, bud. Nobody says yeah, I've been lathering up. That is one giant forehead to get burnt. Lathering. <laughs> <laughs> lathering up a ham hock. I got some pants in here so I can throw on, but. Yoga pants? If you got really fat, chubby legs, they look actually fat, chubby better when they're uh, got a pan on the dirt. Yeah, Jeff, it, it's a uh, good cut right here. Oh, yeah. Grummy? I think it's even not like a flathead. Waking up? Do I need to assist you in any way? I don't. What you got? Head shaker? Big drummy. We, I think we are a big drummy too. I think we're out of here. We got us another big dummy. So we went to a flathead spot, marked some couple of big fish, or, which were together, and it should have told me that uh, I should have said, "Yep, you got a big dumb drum." Oh boy, he's barely hooked. You gotta see this one. Lamont, you big dummy. What do you want me to? You want me to? Behold. Epic this is drum. drum drum. Look at this thing, folks. Oh my gosh. We got a measurement on here. You can get a link get a length on him. Get a length on him. Twenty-eight inches. Twenty-eight inches. That's one big drumming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think you can see it very good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. We're out. Yes, sir. Epic's going to keep doing drum solos. <laughs> Night. Uh, Joe Ziggler says, Bay! We got better baits than that. Down St. Louis, everybody. Yes, it's the boo dad joke. Yeah, have it says, is Epic giving us the hint? If he wants to play the drums on the river, yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's good action. <laughs> you know what that is? Eight the other blue note, that size, yeah. When a drum or eating giant big bluegill, when it when a drum or eating bluegill, you need to leave. Yep, that's our cue, ladies and gentlemen. Danny Stone says, if you guys want to stick with the drum till I get to the river, I'm totally cool with that. He says. Jenny, small pepper. Uh, how many have we caught so far? I think we got six flatheads and a couple big drum. Yeah, we could eat them drum too. We ain't got time for them drum. Yep.
Michael Murillo, I love the I love the fish. They fight hard, but Lars Ulrich is my favorite drummer. Yep. Give some of that double kick bass going on. I got to see the Dallas Kings out there. Got to go backstage too. The only one that came back there was uh, Jason. Yep, Johnny. Fantastic day catching so far. Yes, sir. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. 75 people says here on my my little count. If you haven't smashed that thumbs up yet, let's do that. Let's try to get to 100 thumbs up today. Share it out. We're going to be going all day into the night hunting for giant flatheads on the mighty Mississippi River. Yeah, let's see that. <laughs> Uncle Chief says, let's see uh, epic dude drums one handed like Rick Allen. Epic putting in the work as usual as I sit here. And I'm good at sitting here. <laughs> and I'm good at doing all the work. That's right. That's all that years of guidance. Uh, I hope I'm better company than some of your customers. <laughs> well, I had a bunch of good customers. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you are a better company than a lot. <laughs> All right, we're going to beat the drum. Sean's going to pump anchor. Let's do that. I'm going to put my phone down. I know I, it's going to be hard for me, but I'm going to put this down. I'll leave you guys to chat amongst yourselves in a minute. I don't know that put any live shad in this field because these are looking a little lift with the way it is. I don't think we do. I mean they're down. I mean they're but, yeah but they were up and then they go down when the light gets on. Alright everybody. Anchor up Sean. Yep. Watch out, we got the wave. their Cat River anchor. Oh, Tides are bent because I threw it. Alright, so so we ended up getting one of those Cat River anchors at, uh, at CatCon. And uh, although it's still a pretty decent heavy anchor, we don't need a 40 pound anchor up here. Because we're not really anchoring in like 40 to 60 foot of water and you know, super, super blue cat current. So that's really been kind of a godsend for Sean. You don't have to pull your guts out on it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad because uh, this time of year I'm not in that heavy anchor pulling shape yet. That one there is actually very nice to pull. So I'm going to ignore all the flathead spots all the way to the boat ramp. Okay. Are you going to go? Okay. We're just going straight to no more, no more shad.
always keep your key in the same spot. Y'all gotta get back in action. There is no breakwater here. do a little arranging. Do 
want the battery charger up there? Do you want to? I'll grab it. Oh, do this thing going right here? Yeah. I'll hook this thing up there so it doesn't get there. I'll grab it. Man, that fish stinks. Mm. Mm. Smells delicious. Y'all are lucky this isn't smell of vision. Because holy moly, does that carp stink. Woo! It's a buffalo carp, right? 25 pounds. laying up here on the beach. All right. Dude, we got 74 people in here watching me eat cookies. 103 thumbs up. $155 in super chats. What? You guys are awesome. We yeah. a bunch of I don't know. That's a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, All right, no playing journey on this journey. You're right. You're right, because that thing got demonetized, like right now. Yeah, but can we play some Survivor? <laughs> <laughs> Rising up! If we were on TikTok, I think we could, but... Back on the... We wouldn't have all the awesome people in the catfish community in TikTok. Oh, man. Hey, Sean, driving away. Ten minutes to the worst ramp in the country. Well, oh, I don't know, know about the country, everything's, uh, but at least in the county. We don't have to do that big cloverleaf no. bull crap anymore. No, we don't. We, we can pretty much just get on now. So it's not going to be as long a drive to this point. That there's called Sunset Marina. Yeah, yep, that's the uh, the lagoon. That chick right there brought her own flotation devices. That's safety first, I always say. <laughs> Catching some fish, let's go and see if we can get a monster. Mm -hmm. Historically, this is where some of the big fish have been. And when I yep. first started fishing with him here, he brought me here and he he put a 40 in the boat within the first 10 minutes. Got kind of spoiled on that. It's been yep. kind of tough this year so far, but we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. You never know until you go until you throw. Now, for some reason, people's uh Unless everybody's taking a nap. Oh, there we go. There's some comments. Can check your mic connection. Okay. I don't know how to do it. But what, you guys got no audio? I don't know what that is. We don't know how to do that. Uh-oh. Mic connection. Oh!
Can you all hear me? I, okay, they can hear us. All right. All right. We'll roll up the windows, turn on the AC. Oof, yeah, that'll be nice. You know what we need? We need one of those, those things. I got one at home. Do you have it at home? Oh, yeah, another clip. I got a deal set up there. All right. Here, here's the, here's the road. I'm going to try to untie the knot out of this. Hold on a second. All right, everybody. Now's the time for questions if you got any. I suppose. Go. Where's our next stop? Avid, we are going to the sunken barge graveyard. It's not the one sunken barge, the single sunken barge that we did with Mark Knott, or uh, PJ Knott, actually. Uh, we may hit that tonight yet, but we're basically deciding where we're gonna set up right before dark. What part of the Mississippi, Anthony? Uh, we are basically Iowa, Illinois, about the mid range. Let's see if I missed Rock anything. Out. Yeah. Where are we heading to? Yeah, we're 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 definitely uh, stand to. We're gonna. It, not only is it a sunken barge graveyard, but it's somewhat of a uh, current break. Uh, and right now level, so that's what we're going to be looking for. We're going to be looking for the right current and the right cover and the right depth. Ace catfishing, doing pretty good. Should have grabbed my glasses. Anywhere near Epic, I can assure you, it's not a halo. It's a ring light. Yes, that's that's true, Danny Stone. Good luck. I think I'm getting motion sickness. Yeah. South Wapello. Oh yeah. Kelly's in. Hey. Sean. There, Sean. We're getting ready to drive over the river and down the road. Down, down. Yeah, I mean, you can go by boat, but it costs way more and it takes way longer to get there by boat. A little bit of motion signal there. Yeah. Wow, it's bright still. Eat some Dramamine and quit being a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> my new nervous habit going down the road I found a little comb so I comb my beard <laughs> as I go down the road the nervous habit yep get the beard lashing out you got some? Mm -hmm. all right so far so good guys yep. the bites all right I'm continuing from last night when I was with Kelly and Uncle Scott and we went to my local canal and caught a 38 pound 46 inch flathead and that so far is the big one of the year for me and I'm gonna tell you I was elated oh yeah to drive home I was I was like floating I felt so good yeah that was a good fish oh beautiful fish good fish we know how flatheads are it's, it's, it's hard to get a bunch of them in a night and some nights you don't get any mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially where I fish and that 38 pounder in that canal is it's about top tier 
yeah. we caught them close to 50 pounds, but man, that was special. Fishing with my Epic Lights, and uh, I had a Patriot James uh, bobber going down there in the lock. And uh, Patriot James bobbers, you haven't seen them there. They look like a green glowing little Chinese lantern down there, just floating around. It was, it was beautiful. I can't wait to get a take down. I knew you'd like them. Oh man. Especially for where you're at. Well, I got two of them. We'll give Scotty the other one, so we you can have what? dual. So we can have dual. Uh, uh, yep. Yep. At that, it's down there because the current's just perfect for them bobbers. I might have to order some because. Oh man, there's like so where awesome. we're going next, you could use one Patriot float, especially if we were going to night fish. Dude, all over the bank. I think I have one with me. Do you? I don't know if I have one with me or not. Oh, if Sean's got them, we're going to use one in one spot. I try to clean out the catch-all back here in between fishing trips because when we go to the canal, we have a plethora. I gotta get the phone out of that. So we have a ton of equipment. We bring in chairs, bait buckets, rods, reels, uh, everything. We got all of it. We put it in a bicycle trailer, kind of like when you see a DMV electric scooter and a, and a bicycle, a swing bicycle trailer. And we load it up and we go down. And you want to be comfortable. You're gonna to spend time on the bank fishing. You're gonna find exactly what you need to take to be comfortable. I'm trying to hold the phone right so that everybody didn't get car sick and trying to watch it. All right. All right. Kelly, we're only 10 minutes from the water, except for we do have to gas up. Gas up, we gotta ice up, we gotta get some stuff at the local Casey's General Store. You know, this diet squirt's about the best diet thing I've ever drank. It's pretty good. Pretty good. That is damn good. I think it goes good for Are we there yet? Uncle Jeep says. We're, it's, it's just around the corner and past the cement plant and uh, Wow, we got stuck going down. We ended up at a, a mine one night because they had the road closed and you're supposed to go up the hill. And we, we ended up in this back road with a boat like at midnight in a mine. I don't know if you can see that. The railroad track runs all the way around, all along the Mississippi for miles. Miles, I can tell you. Try for maybe a 4:30 bite. You know, Kelly, this time of year on the Mississippi, it could happen at any moment. We do know that, you know, the light change is a big deal. But pre-spawn, a lot of times the daytime bite is better than the night bite. But it's been hot for a while, and so I, I do believe, and it's towards the end, so it's possible we'll have a good night bite tonight too. Wow, that's rough. Uh oh. Oh, Joe Ziegler. Ten dollars, a little extra for supplies. I always enjoy the show, guys. Well, Joe, we're just glad you guys can come along with us. This is pretty cool. I mean, it's this is really cool. I mean, we did it for years without being on, you know, YouTube and all that stuff. And now we get to meet some of the greatest catfishmen that there is on the planet. The greatest people. You guys are interested. You're always fun. Always asking questions. Always sharing. Always helping other people. It's fantastic. Let me see if I can. This day and age, it's nice to have a little community where everybody can it is. together. No matter your race, color, yep, creed, yep, religion, yep, yep. whatever. We all have it in common. We're all, we've are all we all grown up doing the same stuff. Awesome community. You'll have to let me know if I'm right. That's what she was doing. Kelly said she was guessing that there might be a 430 bite. She's, she likes to be right a lot. Her last name is actually right. Yeah. Awesome. She's been pretty good luck. She's she's been with Uncle Scott and I, and we've got some monsters with her. Nice. I did browse her this morning because her she is a photographer, but her catfish pictures were not up to par. I forgive her because of the mosquitoes and oh, the, and the adversity, uh, 
And this morning, I, I thought you said she was fired. No, I said that. <laughs> just, oh, just, no, kidding, no, Kelly. just kidding, Kelly. Just kidding, Kelly. She's not fired. I don't. No, usually, we, you know how it is. Usually, what I do, anyways, is I let my uncle hold him because he's only like five six and about a hundred and forty pounds at that. So he makes a forty look even more monstrous. But yeah, here really. Yeah. We were on Danny's thing last weekend, and uh, yep. I think it's on Creole tonight on the Mississippi uh, River Rat. Yeah, and Sean uh, has service on his phone, so while I'm running this live, he can actually check in with Danny a little bit. Yeah, well, that's what we're going to be doing. That cornfield is only 474 a gallon. I don't understand about the cornfield. It's like it's bad for both. 85 or whatever. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set this camera up on the deck while we do all this stuff so they can have something to look at. They can see their money at work. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Michael Marillo, this gas is for you. Oh, look what they're doing over there. They're dredging the hell out of that. All right, you're going to have to go back and make sure okay. I'm lined up. Enough. Yep, all right, you got to hold. Yeah, all right. Gonna go back there and line me up. He's telling me to come on back. All right, I think we're lined up. I think my gas hog is gonna be good enough, maybe. Oh my God. Let me get out here so we can see it. So epic. Got another boom, boom, boom. Oh Texas plumber with the 20 dollar. Wow. Hey, watch this. All right, guys. Sean wasn't lying. Watch. The other way. The other way. Lord have mercy. I don't know if you can even see that. So. You hold it. I got hold it. It says fish on it. So everything fishing related that I get a super chat for goes on to this car. And then that's what we use for all of our stuff. It's awesome. All right. Thank you guys again. Awesome, awesome. I got to get my cheaters on. I can't read this thing. I know. Hey, you grab mine too? When you, when you get them? Where are yours at? Uh, you put them in the back. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh. Why would I? I put them in there. I'll just use his. How about that? So I can read what in the heck is going on here. Put you over in the shade. Oh. Alright, here we go. Texas Plumber, the only live stream that I watch. Catch them all, guys. Thanks, buddy. Truly, truly appreciate it. Joe Ziegler on his $10. The help for supplies. Always enjoy the show, guys. Thank you, thank you. Now, explain this deal. Well, when he has to fuel this Sea Arc, the, there's a bottleneck somehow in this fuel where it goes into the tank, and he has a hell of a time getting the fuel to stream in there so he has to actually 
swirl the fuel around. Because because in every one of the, every one of these has a whole bunch of you got your finger in the way. Uh, every one of these uh, pumps got a bunch of foam in it. Well, that foam builds up at the neck and it'll shoot right yep. in your face. Yep. I looked back here and seen him shooting fuel everywhere. Luther, what's going on? Yep, Luther says his does the same thing. So yeah, I, I carry a funnel around in the truck. We got it actually uh, locked up in the back here. <laughs> Cause I, I saw him trying to fuel it the, uh, a couple days or a couple weeks ago and we it wasn't forgot pretty. The funnel. We forgot the funnel, it was not pretty. It takes like 20 darn minutes. Yep. Flat rock, flat ass, what's up? Cody Robinson said it's giant time. You yeah. damn right, buddy. We're trying. Yep, Texas plumber, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Hey, let's go to the jungle hall and try to pop one real quick. Even if we go back there later. We might not have a signal, but we'll see what happens. Want to? You mean all the way down? No, that hole. This one right over yep. here? Yeah. Let's call that one the cut hole. Uh, yeah. Because it's going to look a lot different than this one. It's going to be a lot more manageable. Everyone says you got deer in the front yard. That's a good sign. Yep. I like to see animal movement. There's our super chat money right there. <laughs> All swirling right down into the drain. Mmm, that's good stuff. Woo. Feeding the beast right there. Smells good. Mm-hmm. Smells like my retirement. <laughs> uh oh. Super chat. There's another oh one right God. there. Cody Robinson awesome. with the twenty dollars. <laughs> Cody. You're awesome, dude. The donkey drink fun. Thank you very much. There's a donkey drinking right here. Look at that sucker. He's guzzling it. The old jet motor. They're everything. And you gotta put gas in them. Hold this Texas plumber says. That open. Just hold that. Yeah. Of course, there has to be a freaking eight ounce sinker on top of it. Texas Plumber said something here interesting. Yeah. Says I learned so much from Epic for free. The least he can do. Oh man, you guys are awesome. Yes, sir. And believe me, I'm never gonna hold anything back here. I'll tell you everything you need to know, or everything I know at least. Maybe not everything you need to know. Cody Robinson, thank you, thank you. You'll see Cody Robinson on Hook Catfish's channel. He fishes yep. with uh, Jonathan. Yep. Uh, those guys catch the monsters. Cody Robinson's got that disease we all have. The tug yep. is the drug, folks. The catfish. I know last night when I got that one, oh, I just, my body just felt loose after that on the way home. You just, you just feel yep. lighter after you get that thing because of the quest, you know. Yeah. If you go too much and don't catch monsters, it gets the weigh in on a fella. Oh, yeah, it does. It gets the weigh in on me. There's a pontoon Jody. Welcome, welcome. I hope we've caught everybody's super jats, chats. Thank you very much again. These are where your super chats go. <laughs> See that hole there where all that liquid's going? <laughs> Yeah, you can look at the thing. Well, that's that. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Joe Biden did that. I've seen those stickers. People put stickers on these things. Yeah. Of some old man pointing at this. I don't even know what that means, but it's some old dude and it says, I did that. I have no idea what that means. Some dude did it. Let's see. Oh my gosh. 
Joe Ziegler come up popping another $10. <laughs> There's another thing. Awesome. Here's another one. That thing is thirsty, he says. Damn right it is. Oh my God. Thank you very much. Oh man, you guys are awesome. You're going to make us fish more. <laughs> yep. uh, Cody says, holy shit, how big of a tank is on that boat? I don't know. 25 gallons. Yep. And then the truck has a 32 gallon. Yeah. It's monstrous. We might, we'll get gas later in the truck. We got enough to get somewhere. We got to stop getting get apple fritter. She's finally full. Get an apple fritter up there. There we go. That's the super chat money right there, folks. <laughs> and don't forget donkey drinks, too. Oh, yeah. No. Oh. It's almost getting that time. What do you got to get inside there? Ice? Oh. Uh, let's check. Oh, it's fine. We're at uh, we're at enough that if we need to stop at uh, Geneseo tonight. Okay. All right. We got three, five, small bag. One small bag. One small bag of ice. Well, I'm gonna sit here and entertain the folk. I think I got enough. Uh, I think I got enough donkey bangs. I need a. a yeah, a pack of uh, Marlboro Light. Okay. I'll get you. I don't usually, but I keep on putting my finger in the wrong spot around here. All right. Yeah, it's bigger than my Dakota gas tank, yeah. Yeah, I filled up the other day in Illinois there. I think it was 160, and that just topped me off. But these jets, they use a lot of, they're so inefficient running, but we get to run over everything. Hell, last week we were up here, we got into the shallow water. We didn't realize it was shallow, it was such a quick rise. We got centered by a vertical log that tipped this boat up in the air, kind of sideways. It was actually <laughs> pretty crazy. Robert James is drinking the sour apple bang right now. Let me see what I got in here. I don't think I got sour apple. I think I got, I got the strawberry. And I think the place that I get it at doesn't have the selection. But we got, I think we got the, the sour heads. So yeah, we'll be all jacked up later. Yeah, Joe, I used to have a Honda Accord. I thought it was an awesome car. I had an 07. Now I got a, uh, I got an 05 Toyota Camry as uh, mama's car. And uh, then I drive this gas guzzling thing to work like an idiot. I need to buy another motorcycle. Yeah, Robert James. <laughs> Those bangs are serious, though. I drank bang last night and... I knew I was coming fishing this morning. I laid down at one o'clock in the morning. I drank that bang, like half of it at like, I don't know, 10 o'clock. My heart was still racing at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, then I was all pumped because I caught that big fish. If you guys get time or whatever, uh, check out my channel, uh, Catfish Heroes. I, we didn't get a lot of good pictures because of the bugs and stuff last night, but uh, we, we uh, landed a 38 pounder. Yeah, Joe, those are awesome cars, man. I'm telling you. Anybody looking for dependable cars, you can't go wrong with those Accords. And the cam I, I got the camera. I got an 05 Camry in it. It is. It's a nice car. Gracias, amigo. Woo. Take your glasses off my face. You can have them. Oh, yeah. For yours. Thank you. Now I can read your stuff. That, that is, if I, if I don't uh, get blinded by the sun. These things are like magnifying glasses. I think you could burn ants with them. Yeah, they're like two times like I'm... <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could burn ants with them. Oh, man. 
Well, all right. Let's go fishing. That's right, Joe. I'm 100% ready. What is this guy? He ain't gonna make the yeah, turn. Yeah, he's not gonna make the turn. He's gonna prevent us from making the turn. Hey, buddy. He ain't gonna make that You're turn. You're gonna. Got the turbo ready. You said what? No, but you thought we were Yep, that's how we do it over here. We just drive over curbs okay. with a big triple axle trailer, double axle trailer. Yep. You now, if drive I would have over thing, I would have knocked the beat off my tire. Right, right, the right. Out of it, right. The bounce them off. <laughs> oh, man. I would have caught the light bracket and ripped the whole, all the lights out of it. That's me, though. That guy drives over it. Nothing. All right, everybody, there's the river right there. Woo. So we're gonna be fishing some industrial stuff, but before that, we're gonna we're gonna fish a. It's kind of a high traffic area, but it's got it's great flathead habitat. The problem is the pleasure boats love to pass through it and right past us, and it, that it kind of sucks for that. But uh, we can waltz in there and pop a big one. That that make my day. I'll put it up with a, a few uh, Gilligan's Island boats. These big dummies need to get quick. I, I know. Get out of the way. Knife and Gun Club Saloon. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a professional. Don't try to and yes, this is one of the worst boat ramps in the country that I've ever launched at. Maybe there's worse, but I haven't found too many. All right, I'm gonna leave you with Sean because I gotta get I gotta get the boat. Yep. All right. All right, what's going on, folks? We got in here. We still got we got 70 some people in here. I don't have the cheaters. Here's an arrowhead I found, a spear tip. Down on my local creek the other day. Beautiful. Yeah, we're gonna go hit a nice, there's a really nice current drop, like a drop off into like a, I don't know if it's probably 15 feet hole with a bunch of trees down inside of it. And I think it bumps clear up to like five feet. And uh, you know, you gotta put it in reverse. And I told you guys I was a professional. Cannot go reverse. There we go. I see smoke. Yep. yep. Well, it looks like I'm gonna ram my. Everybody took the parking spot, so I'm gonna go ram this thing over here by this cottonwood tree up in the sand. And that's where we're gonna land. You're right up in here. In the shade. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Winders. Heat belt. Ignition. Chug my squirt. Oh yeah. That's good stuff.
you guys attached to the ring light. And we're going to go jump on board with our guide for the day. We have a YouTube channel. The Catfish. The other day I walked it with the windows up. One of the windows was down. That's a good job. Show's tanking. Heads up. Alright. There's the man, the myth, the legend right out there. A little breezy. Hope the wind noise isn't too bad. Jim Scott, Sean Liggett, how you doing, bud? Some catfish hero. He's excited. You suckers ready to go fishing? All aboard! All aboard! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're back in the saddle again. Alright, you guys have to bear with us. We don't know what the signal flag is going to be like over here. I think it should be okay, but uh, we'll see.
destination, Giant Flathead. Right now. We may have to anchor on this twice. The current is still ripping through here pretty good, but I do believe we can get the right angle on. I did mark two good flatheads. I don't think they're, uh, I don't think they're four footers. I think they're 30, 36 inches. There was two of them along the bottom. Is it? All right. So we're gonna we're gonna have to. It's starting to shove us out away from the cover anyway. So go ahead and pull her up.
got now? Uh, four, uh, seven. Okay. Eight, eight and a half. No one now. Eight, nine. Nine and a half. Come on, baby. Oh, this ooh, we're gonna be able to stay here. Oh, wow, that's a nice. That's why, that's why we work on it. Yes, way. sir. That's nice. We got a nice angle on that thing. Excuse my mug for a second, I gotta make sure. It says it's fully charged. All right. 67 people still in here. All right, everybody hear us, see us. Austin, this is the Mississippi River. This is considered the Rock Island Pool, I think. Looks good and sounds good. Thanks, Chief. Good signal. Nice. Beautiful. That's all good news. Now, we're going to use a majority of uh, weights that are going to be from uh, 7 to 9 ounces because what I don't want is I don't want our baits to tumble in this stuff right into that giant gnarly piece of wood top. Unless I want to. Cody's Cody's time I think a lot of No, I just that oh, was that. Yeah, yeah, Austin. Yeah, Illinois. He says we're close enough to the bank we can call if we can hire uh all order pizza and have Uber Eats bring and stuff. Well, it's, separate, it's like an island over though. <laughs> yes, sir, it's donkey time. Let's go. This spot has some potential. Big time. Freddy, what's going on, man? Freddy's outdoor adventures this day. Anthony Duckworth, what reels is Epic using? Well, he's got a smattering of a lot of stuff. Yep. That's a uh, uh, Shakespeare Tidewater, there's another Tidewater out. Burning uh, Shark. Burning Shark. Just a bunch of different stuff.
pretty much the perfect bluegill. Not too big, not too small. directly in front of the boat. It's about four foot of water. And we have a whole lot of current just smashing into this, but getting routed around this big tree. So you've got shallow water dumps fairly hard down into 9, 10, and then goes down into 20 where that giant cotton is. Boy in a cup, babe. Boy Robinson says, Sean, do you guys ever pay attention to what kind of bottom you're fishing? Tree spawn, like mud, sand, rock? Which do you prefer? Uh, I, I like rocks, but there's not a whole lot of it on this upper portion of the Mississippi. I do enjoy rock. Most of it's going to be hard pan clay and a little bit of limestone, sometimes gravel, but usually if there's too much gravel, it's too slow at most of the time of year to hold big flat in a lot of time of year. You know, most of the Yeah, Tony, we caught a couple uh, epic drum after that, and uh, now we've been on a journey to come to our next spot. And we're just, just anchored up and put face down on this big piece of wood back there. It's in deep water, there's a big current right here. It has to tend to spot this. This is the kind of spot that giant. Just about ready to make a donkey drink. Yeah. Hey, there's Kelly Bullock in the house. Tony says, you guys picked a beautiful day for some fishing. Good luck, gents, off the baseball tournament. We'll watch the rest later. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate you. We'll get with you, man. Come up with some smaller fishing. Thanks again, bud. Good luck tonight. Are you pouring? I am. Huh. Oh, you 
Good afternoon. our chances of landing them goes down exponentially. And we knew that because, you know, last time we fished it, to get a bite, you had to be right on the cover and it would just immediately snag. It's not that clean right now. It's some pretty high wood. We are surprisingly close to it already. May not look like it, but it is. The root ball of this cotton was only six feet off of the back of the boat. And how you know you got to do is gauge the trees that are on the shore and say okay there's the top we're looking at about 65 70 feet so it's about 65 70 feet maybe 85 feet to the top of this tree so it's going to be pretty much and and i i was able to scan it on the uh, on the fish finder. hey mike what's up big mike
shallow this time of year, but if you move too shallow, you're going to be dealing with small fish. You need that thing. Wind pump. Is that over? I was lucky uh, that I caught that. Yeah, you're in the right place. When we fished this two weeks ago, three weeks ago, it was a bear. We had to actually, we roped off to the back, to the bank over there to keep us from swaying. It just it crashes through here at an angle. Is it a Cat River anchor? Cat River anchor. Yeah, it's all right. It's not a hurricane, and that does not, it's hard to pull in. <laughs> Range out a little bit. He's getting his feelers out, folks. 
Watch out. Going on. Highly dangerous move. It was gorgeous out here. My God. and a miss. Should have had a little bit more patience. Stephanie and real gals, what's up? Are you going to be out fishing tonight with Richard? The Mississippi River Rat Show? Just okay. 
There he is, right there. We were talking about him earlier. Speaking of the devil, with our, our buddy Michael Cashmore's in the house. Michael Cashmore. Look right there. Oh, that's Michael Cashmore. Michael Cashmore, man. Thank you, thank you again. Awesome welcome in. There's Bob from Jacksonville. Hey. Glad to see you in here. Bold Lion. Just happened to pop in before I go to work. Wanted to say hi to my catfish fam. Love y'all. Thanks, Bold Lion. Thanks for coming in. Yep, she's gonna be there. Yeah, Michael, we've got uh, six six flight heads boated today so far. A couple of epic drum. And uh, now we're uh, in big cat territory here trying to scare up a monster. Of course, we are not in blue cat waters. We are focusing on flatheads. And some nice... Here about 10 minutes. Missed one. Hey, Art. What's going on, buddy? From the One Ton Fishing Club. Seventy-eight people in here. Y'all mind, mind smashing a thumbs up? We're up to 117 thumbs up. Share it out. All day, all night. We're going. Me and me and the cat this year. About all night, but we're gonna we're gonna stay out. Perfect habitat. This might be the right wrong time of day. So sometimes you got to deal with it. But now I'm pulling in here before in the middle of the day. It fits comfortably. Yeah. I think next on the agenda is we're going to go find some sunken barges, current break there, and we're going to tie off and we're going to see if we can get a mosh out of there. But as you can see, this is a very, very nice spot. Eighty-seven people in here. Nice. Nice. Mike Urban, what's going on, buddy? Real gals, avid, bold line, Bob from Jacksonville, Michael Cashmore, Uncle Jeep, Fresca had a stand, Mike Turner, Art. Brent Beckwith. Yes we are. Thomas uh, the moonrise last night was about midnight. And it was absolutely awesome. It's still on that strawberry phase when it comes up. It actually looked like I was looking at a moon from a different planet almost. It was so deep, like a darker color. It was really awesome. Avid fisherman, I vote to go to the sunken barges. All right, we're telling that vote. All right, let's get votes. We got, we got one vote for sunken barges. How about me and, me and Epic just rope off and swim the rest of the day? <laughs> And drink our donkey drinks. Frolic. And frolic. We can, we can get in there and splash each other with water. Me and Epic, and then we can dunk each other a little bit. Play a little Marco Polo. <laughs> yeah. Marco. 
there is a party beach right around the corner here called Buffalo Beach or something. Yeah. We come flying up there and beach this sucker. Like full speed. Yep. We'd have to wait for high tide to come get us off. Yeah. So rain. <laughs> Almost anybody right, everybody. Coming. Time to lose some shit. Uh-oh, he's going in the wood. Epic lost a bunch of ricks today. He didn't know what to do. He's going to have to get on Facebook. Contact Uncle Lou. In contact Uncle Lou. I think that's the lyrics. I don't know. I'm an idiot. Joe Ziegler says, I like this spot. Give it a little bit longer. Yeah, Joe, he's going to start creeping them baits in. Get risky now. There's some high wood in there. There's low wood. There's low wood. There's wood in between. I had two of them back to back with a nice takedown. As soon as it got set down, I was still made it with a snag. I'll do that sub block here today for my tasty leg. Yeah. I've been reapplying it. <laughs> Yeah, girl, six flathead still. We, we 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 came down river. And now we're doing a little bit of a little bit of wild fishing here with the trees. After this, we're going industrial. We're gonna go to uh, some sunken old barges. Yeah. <laughs> I think what Abbott's trying to say is he wants you to do it old river certified style and go park on top of it. So here's the thing. Let me, let me explain that to everybody. What we've got here is we, on top of the surface, is about three mile an hour current. It doesn't matter what rod you've got when you've got high wood like this. If you are fishing current like that, you can get by with it with slow current. But what you've got, you'll have 20 feet of line up. As soon as you start to pump that fish up, he goes back in the current and gets tangled in the crap. I've done it. I've tried it. It's rarely successful in a spot like this. Okay, so I oftentimes think, okay, let me get down into this thing. But what you end up doing is you just end up snagging up a fish and breaking them off. If it's any fish of any consequence. Now, if it was four foot deep, fine. But 20 foot deep, it just goes, swings back. When he's fighting, because that initial fight on a flight is just a freak show. And we have a way better shot at having the angle on it away from the high wood to where if he swings up, he doesn't get back in the stuff, if you get what I mean. Because with this stuff, you can't take it easy on him, like I, I always say, because there's actually a ripple almost underneath the boat where we're at right now. I mean, it's, it's down there about 15 feet. But it's a big, hairy ass, nasty root ball. And I've got one bait right on. Hairy ass root ball. Big hairy ass. Terry Lane, yep. You're gonna have to make a short one that morning. Happy anniversary. Oh my god. Boom, boom, boom. Michael Cashmore is in the chat. And he just what sent you fifty dollars travel Michael and doggy Cashmore. dream fund. Michael Cashmore. Boom. Oh my god, dude. Alright, this one's for my I'm going in. I'm going in. This, this rig is going into the jungle right this, now. This rig's a Michael rig right here. <laughs> Sending it. Thank you very much, buddy.
Oh man, that is so awesome. Thank you, thank you. So when we first started, we were 10 foot away with almost every rig, away from the wood. We got bit on one rod and it short bit the hook. I grabbed it, probably should have waited a little bit longer. But now we have gravitated towards about two or three foot next to this giant cottonwood tree, which is mainly a big trunk. So you got the back of the boat. So it's so it's eight feet here and right behind the boat, not far, four foot, it's about 15 or 16. And then just kind of shoots down into 20 and goes for a, a reasonable distance and then backs up. So that tree is sunk down underneath the boat, basically, only about four foot back. It's a gigantic, big, hairy root ball. A big donkey bait with 12 ounces of weight straight down into it. And then the trunk of the tree, which lays pretty flat along the bottom, I've got this bait sucked up right to the main trunk, which the main trunk's got all kinds of garbage all over it. Now on this side, see this major current break? If you look, see most of that current going around this, it's because of the drop. It's because of this kind of juts out. So it's directing current this way out away from this tree. That's why it's here. Along here, there's back current, which I plan on throwing some rods in there at some point. But what we've got is tree roots all along the bottom, and it's nasty. You almost get, it's either a fish or you lose your stuff, which, which I'm fine with. But if the fish aren't active, there's no sense in even throwing if I can't catch any fish here. So we'll go to slower current, even though the current on the bottom is actually flathead style current. We're going to go to a little bit slower current where maybe they've stacked up a little bit more, more like the bridge. Walk by here. Looks like an absolute so, perfect spot to me. Step, step up here, I'll show them right where the root ball is. Where that line goes in the water, that root ball is in about 16 foot of water, 17 foot of water, straight down, right there. And this whole area is shielded from the major current by the rise of this tiny little closing or wing tank. Right so, so this is a perfect planet habitat, especially since what, and, and I know what goes on here, it's 15 foot of water all the way down, all the way to where that boat is back there, if you can see it. So there's 15 foot of fairly straight away. So this is the head of it. So there are big fish here. There is no doubt in my mind. But are they gonna find them? That's the key. yards away. Now we are going to go to the main channel and target some flatheads there too, but oftentimes this late in the season you want to be on your secondary channel such as this. But I've often heard you say that you like them when they're not too far from the main channel. Oh, uh, the, this is ideal. The, the, yeah, absolutely. You're saying that this is, yeah. this is... Now if this was three channels away, yeah, it's not as good. It usually holds flatheads, but usually right. holds smaller fish. And you'd be hell bent to find current like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, this is absolutely beautiful. We're going to contact one of them here one of these days. It's going to be a giant. Oh my God, what's going on in here? Johnny SM, 1999 with the six Woo! chat. Thank you, thank you. So everybody at home, if you can think of a spot that you would yeah. like consistently come upon big flat ends. this is one of the things that you're going to look for right here current coming into it but shallow up above it and and, and it not not it's not that the bank drops like this it's that the whole river across it drops like this boom so if you're coming with the current it goes like that and then levels out and then there's a piece of wood cover in it a big piece of wood cover so we've got flat ends here it's the right current you know, it's a little heavy on the top, but by the time it, you know, that rod and bait, I mean, the bait and the weight settles, it is nice flathead current. 
That's one thing I've noticed fishing with you. You've done it so long that when you get your baits down in these areas, you have a feel. And yes, you can't teach I that know that's it. for time on the water. You can feel the pull on that bait, whether it's in a push zone or whether it's, it's getting pushed on. And I've been trying to incorporate that in my life, like in the little things and situations that I fish, yes. is I'll feel that guy. And if he's, he's calm, but the water's moving on top, I'm in a good zone. Good. I'll call it the bubble. Yeah, there, there's a ton of areas that look too ferocious or fast, and you don't know until you put a bait into it. But it's going to let you know a little bit. Now, if this was just 20 foot all the way through, this would be terrible. Besides the fact that there's, you know, a piece of wood maybe blocking some current, because that that current, that whole thing's going to create a, a zone, a tunnel that comes through, and it's just going to be too fast for them. It's not that they can't sit in fast current, but they don't prefer it. This is perfect, and I often say, all we need now is for him to pull the rods down. That's all we need. And hey, let's face it, this could be a terrible bite. Hey, Roger, what's going on, buddy? Roger Muskrat Adventures is in here. Here's again. Roger, we got six of them so far, flatheads today. And we're looking for a monster. We're in a perfect spot, buddy. Like this it, it's it's at what they call 10 foot right now once it drops to six seven eight foot it they'll still be here because of the cover and there's still going to be current here because it basically funnels through but what's going to happen is you'll find them just as likely if they're active in the wood cover but you also find them out here where the main current is a little bit stronger so you can throw it behind the little wing dike and let it dribble along the bottom until it finds that little those, those little things. And, and I've literally sat in spots like this and picked off nothing at, at the wood and eight fish out at the corner. And sometimes they're five to twenty-five pounds, and sometimes they're thirty or forty. Oh man, I thought that was gonna follow up. Okay. I think we're in the uh, the gold for fight. We should have been tagged. Yeah, we got tagged. Oh, that's a If Abbott's still in here, there is a, a situation that if we didn't have any other places to go that I would do in this spot, and I would actually tie up to the back end of the tree, because it's fairly clean on the end of this, but it's not really, it would be more luck to contact fish there too, because there's no reason for them if they're active to be there. This is the head of it, there's absolutely nothing in front of us for a couple of miles, and there's everything behind. Now, we could. I've done it, and I did it a lot in the past, but that's your 5, 10, 15, 20 pound fish. It is usually just kind of milling around in there in between it. Usually the big fish are going to be sitting at the head of it where they're the most aggressive and can control it. But you also notice one thing. We're not getting bit by small platids here. Okay? There isn't a but, and, and if there wasn't any big ones here, <laughs> this would be perfect habitat for those 5, 10, 15, 20 pound fish. You know, even a 30. So you know right now it's the spawn. Basically, it's basically late pre-spawn. 
And if you move into an area like this and do not get bit, you got one of two things going on. Here you go. One or two big flatheads controlling it and they're not active or there is no bite. And I still haven't figured out exactly which one that is, why we're not getting big, big fish takedowns right now. Going in after him now. Eighty-three people in here. So right now we have one bait between. It's on the slope. So there's a, about a six-foot shelf, and it's up this one's up on the six-foot shelf. This one right here is past the root wall. I kind of laid it over the trunk of this big cottonwood. This one over here is at the root ball. This one right here is up on this left side, on the current break side. That one is out in the current break wash, and this one is behind the wing dike out to the left. Yep, thanks again, Michael Cashmore and everybody at Super Chatted today. Thank you, thank you. There's old catfish favorite outdoors. How you doing, Lynn? Mm-hmm. Are you guys going out tomorrow as well, or just one long day today? We'll see what happens, bud. Maybe going out tomorrow. We'll see what happens. If we don't, I know I'll have to slide back up there to my little canal. We slid a monster out there last night. If you want to check that out? It's on my channel, Catfish Heroes. We didn't get much good pictures because the bugs are so crazy, but we got the weight of it. 46 inches, 38 pounds. Got me all tuned up. 
I loved it. That thing was a drag ripper. Samira Yus Yusuf. Hello to everyone here. Happy weekend, guys. Good morning from the Philippines. Nice. The Philippines. Awesome. Yeah, Joe Ziggler, I saw Michael. Yep. <laughs> Michael will pick him up. The travel and donkey drink fund. Nice. Johnny. Yep. There's everybody that contributed to the donkey Thank drink fund. Thank you all. Fund. I hope Woo. I didn't miss anybody. Thanks for that link, Mike. It's not a great video, but it shows you the fish anyway. Short. It's not like they got to invest a bunch of time yeah, in it. It's short. It's got a lot of bugs in it. You've got some giant mosquitoes in it, oh, dude. The There's like a thousand mosquitoes. I'm going to post more videos of it. I got the fight, I got the netting of it, and the struggle of netting of it because uh, when I fish that canal, I carry a smaller net, something more portable. And you've got to literally let the 40 pounders drive themselves into there and get their bellies <laughs> over, the, over the rim of the net into the hoop. And it's not easy, but it's tough enough as it is all the stuff to pay. I do need to get another net, but maybe one of these days. It's kind of got sentimental value. I actually have a zip tie on there uh, that's patching up one of the pairs. Samira, yeah, this is a uh, this is the Mississippi River. This is like a fork off the main channel, the Mississippi River. This is a uh, Illinois side, Rock Island pool. Yeah, this is the big Mississippi River, bud. Fight's cooled off a little bit, but I'm I'm certain this afternoon we're gonna pop it. We're gonna pop it. Cafe Speedburn Outdoors, he says, you guys on a pay lake? <laughs> yep. You got to pay to come here. Yeah, you do. You got to pay to pull up to the pump. Joe Ziegler says donkey coming in 10 minutes. 10 minutes.
Here, run, yeah, we got like six layer heads earlier. The bites kind of slowed down. We moved down river. We're trying to snag into a breach. Well, he went in there. I think we're going to get a head out move here in a little bit. We are, but I am going to set one right in the Yeah, put them back in the case.
trouble every time. Heavier. Yeah, and then three, three later. Yeah, pretty soon there's one minute left. All right, people, I am tired of not catching fish, so we are going to go with Augusta. We're not going to do anything that's marginal. It's all going to be heavy fish spots. So normally, you uh, deal with a marginal spot because you have to. If all you were going to do is hit, like, the best of the best, all you would do is travel for 30 miles and, like, spend 20 minutes in five spots. Because really, in a 30-mile pool like this, 28 miles, however long it is, it's really only about six or seven spots throughout the whole pool that are worthy of giant fish. So, but every once in a while, you can catch a giant fish in a transition area that's kind of a, it's a good spot, but it's not a great spot. But it doesn't happen too often. So, you know, if, if you're going to be on the river all day, you need to watch your time. From here, it's basically going to be mostly industrial from here on out. So we're going to fish the barge graveyard. We might uh, sneak in between the uh, bank and a barge that is uh, landlocked. I mean, it's stopped there. So there's there's a general current, and if the current's right, it'll be bouncing off the bank and going underneath the barge instead of the other way around. If it's the other way around, if the current is coming from the main channel, coming underneath the barge and pushing towards the uh, bank is not right. So we'll know when we get there. Unfortunately, you got to spend the time because you can't see it. you got to feel it. There's a couple spots like that. Who votes for moving? I do. Let's go. When you get your stuff back and you're bringing up roots, you know you were close.
people this is the point of an island right here this is the barge that's permanently here and the tie of the barge is off here so we're in between the bank and the barge it's only about how many feet right underneath the boat right now it's 12 feet 12 feet here but it's 
kind of what the bottom launches off underneath the bars right here. Now, if the current is coming in here sufficiently enough to pull our base underneath the bars, the better. But in recent years, we had other things come in here, more trees and blah, blah, blah. It was better when it was a little bit cleaner because you could actually land the fish. But still, every once in a while, on a short anchor, I can catch a decent fish here. Let's see what happens. Oh boy, low battery. I'm not getting no lights here. Here, I got a thing to charge it. Here, you want to charge this up? We can unplug it and charge this up. And I got another one I can put the phone on right now. Hopefully it works. It's not too good.
Okay. This little thing is charging right now. So. <laughs> yeah, I want to get one of them powered them banks too. Yep. Here's something else for all you guys at home. This is a classic situation. The problem, I don't know if we'll catch fish here right now at this moment, but anytime you can find a barge this close to shore with adequate depth and decent current going into it, especially if it's got some wood, it's always, because I mean, they've got overhead cover underneath this barge. This creates shape all day long. And so they can live underneath there, they can come out here, they can do all this kind of crazy stuff. And uh, uh, it's really been a shoe-in going to go-to spot. Not, not every time you go, but on the odds, if you catch it right, the right current, the right day, the right bite, the right time, uh, you're going to land some good things. literally seen it when it's four or five fish in one spot just like this. Cockeye and catfish says, does the barge cut you off? Rough, sharp edges? Fishing under it? Not with a lot of film with it. Not with 50 pound lot Jimmy Geiger, we're fish. fishing the Mississippi River. Rock Island pool. You, you do have to angle your rods. You can't do it. You know, let it ride against the bottom of the barge. But if you get one on and you aim it left, usually it's deep enough on there to not uh, get on the very bottom. It's like this barge is not loaded, so it's only in the water about three or four feet.
took half of this fish and moved underneath the barge. And I reeled down, it was, it was real nice and steady, didn't have the hook. But I, but I couldn't wait because if he goes underneath the barge back there, that doesn't work. wait on that fish because you saw where I casted it is between that, that where the two barges are separate. There's a barge here and a barge there. So if you start moving completely right, if you move back, you're fine. You, you, can, uh, you can actually give them some time. But if you move this way, you can put that on him. Otherwise, you are against the barge because he's way on either. You know, some of you guys at home are thinking, okay, there, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of thinking that goes on to doing what we're doing. You're thinking, okay, uh, why does that catfish do certain things, especially when they're not paying off? Now, when the bite's good, that, that's a shoe in. That's an absolute shoe in. You can reel on them that fast. I probably should have waited. But I saw that line going straight underneath that barge like that, and I had no choice. Because I've been in this situation too many times. I mean, I know I know what happened. Now, if it's down here and goes underneath the barge, you can get the angle. But as far as casting back and you're going into that crack, you end up on the really bad end of the barge. And believe it or not, I'd really rather miss a fish than I would hook him and just basically break off and leave him with a hook and who knows what else. 20 feet of line that he can get wrapped on something and basically die. Mm. Now, it just is what it is. Not unusual in a day's fishing, especially when you fish spots like I fish, to miss quite a few fish because you're really fishing for them where they live. And if you're fishing for them where they live, you can have to deal with some of those fish are inactive, but they're active enough to pick up a bait and move. But they don't really have the bait. Sometimes they pick half of it, move and spit. Sometimes they just carry half of it. This morning, we didn't have a single problem because they were obviously long. I mean, their activity level was hot. Uh, but sometimes you go through this. Sometimes it's uh, great bites all day. Those are the days that you, uh, you really uh, wish for. Uh, but. We're not getting that today because uh, we would have we got bit aggressively at the last spot we were just at if the bite was, I would say, in a positive tone. Now, can you still catch a few fish? Yep, you sure can. And sometimes they can be really big. But a guy's got to go through the motions on what works time and time again for the situation and the time of year. Keep moving. Everyone, put a spinner leaf bait on top of bait. Right. I'm having a. I'm not getting a great pull here. Yeah. That's a good one, okay? Yeah, Joe, you're right. Notice some spots I don't move bait a whole lot. This is such a small spot that it's really unnecessary because any of those fish are, are they're either up underneath this barge or they're out here active, or they'll come from the barge because they know they, they feel the vibrations, they can smell it, they see whatever, and then they'll come up and then go back. And it's pretty obvious by that first one. When they're out, they usually pull back. When they're under and come up, they go back. 
and that one definitely went back. My other guess, and it makes me feel a little bit better, is that he wasn't all that slow. So he was most likely a smaller fish, probably under 25 pounds. If they're really big here, they move, they move really methodically and slow. know which one it is. Yeah, we're going to go to cut bait on the next spot. We'll still use some live baits. We're, we're in that lull period where we, we, we literally contacted a flathead on every rod but one. Uh, it, they just gently hit it, held it, and spit it. Then you can see by the, by the fish and how they uh, uh, held it in their mouth. And, you know, one was like stone dead uh, because it had been in the mouth, you know, just I can't explain exactly uh, why flatheads do it, but we just know they do. They'll come up, they'll suck in a bait. You don't even see the hit hardly at all. It just looks like bait. And then get your bait back and it's scaled on one side, not scaled on the other side. Sometimes they're stone dead because they've just been holding their, their head. They just been holding their head like that. They can't breathe. And they hold on to them for a while and just lose interest in them. But at some point, you fish will be active enough. To They're just the killing for the thrill of it. The thrill of it. Just killing it. The exhilaration. Feeling the, the bluegill's soul yeah. leaving his body. Right here.
better than nothing, but it's not going to stop. No. No, but we can move in there after dark. Either side. Yeah, and then especially the traffic goes down.
you guys around so they can't see anything high than everybody this is not optimal but it's still fishable now, normally we do not have this barge parked over the top of and sitting on the sunken barges that are basically <laughs> so we're basically uh, anchored inside a sunken barge that doesn't have a top to it so the back side of it is right off to our right Sean will show it to you in a minute and we are going to try and catch one in the crease in between this barge and in between the two Yeah, it's pretty dangerous, but at times it's one of the best spots to fish on the river. I'm not saying it's going to be today, but it's possible. Hey, there's Nicole. What's going on? Cockeyed catfish. It's a sea art.
No, Mark, we're not. We're, I think you're kind of at a wall right now. We're getting ready to set in here and get some big, big fish spots. See what we can get. Sometimes this is a numbers game, but sometimes it's a big fish spot. So I'm really tempted to go to the head of this, too. If this doesn't work out. So, yeah. Everybody at home, I have literally caught massive amounts of flatheads here. Not just massive amounts, but also a large number of big fish. But sometimes it's the middle of the afternoon, sometimes it's in the morning, sometimes it's after dark. It's a, it's a decent after dark spot, but it's not a huge fish after dark spot. 25, 30 pounds are still milling around in here. It seems that the big fish come to rest in here during the day, and then they move out at night. Because, I mean, I've literally fished this spot hundreds of times. And when it's on, you can move in here, fish for an hour, and catch four or five flatheads, move off of it, come back in the afternoon or in the evening, and catch another four or five flatheads. But that, it doesn't mean that it's on, on right now. It's got both spawning habitat, it's got current, it's got a holding, a holding zone, it can be used for many things, and a current break if the river's too high, which usually 10 foot, like it is right now, this is actually fairly high, and there's usually still fish here. The only problem we have is this barge is sitting over my main target. Don't be drinking a suntan. <laughs> tournament there, bag master. I keep talking to your phone. <laughs> You're looking at it, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm going to put my glasses on. Did you already get them? Wow. 
make the light even brighter. Yeah, but... All right, everybody. For some reason, Sean's phone gets a little behind. Now it's not. Okay, so now I can see. I can see what's going on. Mark, not cockeyed catfish. Joe Ziegler talking to Jody. Now, does this spot? in you guys' experience look like something you would target. Because I ignored it for several years. What's up? Well, they can kind of see it. Okay, Alex, these are relatively shallow where we're able to fish, 9, 10 feet. But that doesn't mean that we don't catch giant catfish here at this time. Like where that rod is, I don't know if you can see it. I don't think so, I think I'm in the way. Um, that rod is only about seven feet deep, but it is the back side of the end of one bar is just in about nine feet. The one on the left is the one I usually target. But this barge that we're up against, right over here, is over top of it. All right, everybody, we're back phone overheated of course because we have to charge at the same time or otherwise it'll run out so I'm gonna have to shade it it looks like sorry about that but you know what I got one of those uh, doesn't this thing like bend over can you do it Maybe we can get a rag over top of this little shade. I got some duct tape or something. I got electrical tape. I'll get, we'll get another one out if you want to tape one. But like this. A little bit of grip. But yeah. I planted bait in that hole before. There you go. Oh, I thought you said. Deep, he said, there you go. Thought we had a bite. Yeah, that 
that sun's blasting in on us. I don't know if you can see the rods or not. There you go. So how is everybody? Cockeyed catfish dangling. I did toss a few snacks. They were some pretty uh pretty sunbaked shad parts. This is really gonna be about a 15 minute spot too. We'll put some uh, time in on some other stuff. Mr. Gadget, it is awesome to be back doing some lives. It really is. All is good now, yep. What up, Troy? have <laughs> been threatening to use you as, as chum. Holy moly. I just chummed a little bit of the water just a minute ago. So we have we have Sean's ring light with a wet paper paper towel draped over it to get a little shade on this bone so it doesn't die again. But usually this spot, if if there's going to be action, usually happens in the first 15 minutes. Keep it up, epic. Joe Ziegler, wow, you're awesome, Joe Ziegler. Michael Cashmore, probably gone over it, but what's the bait for today? We had some live shad earlier this morning because we were close to the, you know, basically the marina that had live shad in it, but we can't hold too many when we have 50 bluegills. I can hold about 25 decent live shad, but that means, and they're so fragile that we'd have to get live shad like three times in a day, which locks us into one area. So we brought about 45, 50 bluegills. We've got a couple of river shiners. We've got, we've got uh, cut shad, which accounted for one flathead today. Uh, but everything else has come on either live shad or live bluegill. Yes, sir. Yeah, the structure is pretty awesome. The only problem is this barge has cut me off from using all but the rare bite big fish spots. Uh, these three rods are notoriously uh, good for big fish, but not necessarily when this monstrosity of a barge is parked over top and it's physically sitting on top of the edge of a sunken barge right now. So it, it kind of shut us off from this whole area, which, which for the most part, you can throw onto the ledge left towards the main channel and let it dribble and it hits the channel side. And then you can target the outside of the barge that we're sitting in right now or over top of. Um, so it has limited us. It's still a worthy spot no matter what's going on to try and stop for 15 or 20 minutes especially during the height of the pre-spawn when they could be posted up inside barges and in the crevices and underneath where the current has uh you know removed the gravel now we just got to hope they take a rod down now the other part is when it's terrible during the day it's usually good at night when it's usually good during the day it's usually terrible at night so I got to kind of wrestle between what I want to do right at dark. Now, there's a lot of uh, pleasure boaters, and the the large barge in 20 some foot of water is barely sticking up. And I think we can get to it as long as we don't have big tuna boats going through. Because the tuna boats, if we actually anchor to it, it's only out of the water about eight or ten inches. The tuna boats will actually send the edge of our boat on top of it and then it'll want to dump us to the left. So I don't know uh, if we're going to be able to fish it like that. We may, we may anchor tight enough to it uh, that it can't put the edge of our boat up on top of it. Um, 
but it, it will smash us against it pretty hard. But I'm willing to do that. I don't really care. Uh, I would just like to contact some flatheads in another spot besides that stinking bridge. And there's no doubt we could go back up to the bridge. Or we could probably go, go south, or we could go back to the first spot and contact fish right after dark. But I would like a shot at big fish and numbers tonight. So I'm going to have to weigh that. Now, I'm trying to listen to the fish, but they haven't told me much since we came downstream. The only thing so far they've told me is go back upstream. <laughs> nope, Sean's behind me right there. He's paying attention to the rods, Alan. Yeah, that doesn't sound like fun. Pretty darn big, Avid, but I put one on earlier and it got bites, but no takers when the fish were actually cheapers. 10% battery remaining. I'm going to plug it into the main system. Technical difficulties, people. Sean, would you like to phone the phone? I, 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 I can't seem to do that. I, I can't fast forward if you lag. Water clarity determines spots for flatheads uh, for you or is typically the same throughout the Mississippi. It will get low and clear at times, and that will uh, determine some spots, but right now it's fairly milky it's uh you know should be a high activity level uh let's see upstream is always good if you are low on fuel true uh josh Lindsay, tim my nephew hugh and i are rooting for you thank you sir thank you uh t med how's it going uh we've voted six flatheads today and uh we're trying our best to get on another good bite in the downstream location which they're here they're just and I'll bet we've had another six or seven, maybe even eight uh, bites, but they're acting like they don't really want to do much, which is not unusual. Not unusual at all when it comes to um, the heat of the day. A lot of hits and spits. Hey Sean, we are gonna. This isn't working. As soon as it dries out, it just kind of. I'll get, I'll get some other ones. I thought it would work. So Sean's gonna rig it up real good. Back that way. That's probably going to make all kinds of noise. It, it is. 
going to be really noisy. Good idea. This is the special MacGyver issue. What scissors? Here, get that one in there. I don't have to hold it anymore. Maybe a couple more uh if you here, I'll be on the scissors. It's gonna be a little bit before we can take it off. Give me a couple more pieces here while we taste it down. like the Hachi thing we made that one other time, right? Oh yeah. You. Ten minutes. to the head of this and throw in front of the body. Yeah. Go in front of the bar, go in front because this one, this one actually goes clear up to there. I mean there's I don't know if there's another one over there, but there is a drop right there. Yeah the umbrella is in the uh pickup. Yeah. Well, that would have been, this is better than the umbrella. The would have been hard to hold up there. Yeah. Ooh, is this a snag? Okay. Is this a snag? Is this a snag? 
We're going to give this spot about five more minutes, then we're going to move to uh, more of a dynamic area because it's kind of kind of it's kind of hemmed in a little bit, and uh, the current flow isn't normal. It's not back flowing on this right side. It's not coming from underneath the barge. It's kind of cut off. We're usually the main channel sweeps uh, current this way up against the barges and I think that if there are flatheads here they're actually underneath this barge and it's just not a great situation day by day. but you never know until you go. This is actually a rare situation where you see barges that are parked clear back this way. Usually they stop about here and then we or they're about and they're both both of these barges there's one one long one and one yeah they're both long but they're literally sitting on top of the edge of the barge that we target the outside edge of because that current sweeps up underneath and there's spots where they live underneath, you know, during the day, they come out, blah, blah, blah. We kind of cut off at the pass, so I think we're going to go up above and try to throw up underneath, see what happens.
like this current flow doing nothing but going down this. It's not coming from the main channel in. No, it's a Going and go ahead and go up. Go, go yeah, we're, we're going to go in. Fish finder. Forty six feet. Kevin, we just moved ahead of these bars. What?
like it. Current's better. Beautiful picture. I'm taking up head. Just about enough sun for the day. So you want to go to the shade, shade bike. bike? Kelly's feet out, coming in hot. She's in the hot. She's mixing. She's got a little cocktail. She's got flames. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yep. Coming in hot. Get your hot ass over here to Buffalo. We'll pick you up. Meet you at the Casey's. She's got a bikini on, and we'll pick her up. Thank both of She's all panned up. She's been going really? and getting panned up. Oh, yeah. Get her hair all prettied up, panned up. You know what? I'm going to join you here, Kelly. Speaks out here in a few. I'm going to get a hot one mixed up. You don't feel like getting a hot one mixed up though when the sun is hot on your skin. But I think mean, you gotta pace yourself, you know. Our bites kind of went to crap. We started out hot. Better get there again. It's just making it through this middle part. Yep. These have been the hours of suck. This, 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 this has actually got a better shot than down there. It was a little bit too uh, reserved. This current's a little bit better. We've made an umbrella out of the ring light so far because the phone was overheating, Kelly. We got a rag over the top of the ring light now taped on there. And it looks great. That's a beautiful. Yeah. Kristen is not pacing herself. Where's she at? Is she at the house? Kelly's talking to the chat. Afternoon, fellas, she says. Everybody say hi to my little lady at home. That's Kelly Speaks Out. Avid, no, he hasn't. He doesn't have time to mess with them. What? Ask if you're still making that uh, you have the light. Oh, boy. I, I, I've got to make three that are on order. I kind of feel bad I haven't had time to do it. But I'm going to make time to do it. I've got a bunch of deadlines that I get done. Wishing for shots. Ain't nobody need any shots. Nothing ever. Doing that. Nobody ever, like, did a bunch of shots and, like, you know, I'm glad I did a bunch of shots last night. <laughs> no one's ever said that. Nobody said that, no. Yeah, I'm glad we got to the shots. Yeah, glad we did like 12 shots in like two hours. I'm glad I'm sitting here quivering at home with a blanket on me. Shaking. Replaying all the stupid shit I said to all kinds of people. 
all the argumentative crap that you said after or uh, hugging old dudes and yeah. like, you know chumming uh, it up uh, yeah, yeah. giving giving old dudes little rib shots yeah you're the greatest i love you man yeah <laughs> no one needs to do no shot you know, if you can do like two and be done you know what great. the only thing good for shots is is like if you're gonna do a, a rudimentary medical procedure in like the yeah, 1800s, exactly. or or <laughs> you're getting ready to do a complete revolution, like in the next two days. Yeah. Your boy Troy says I still haven't used my epic lights. What the hell are you doing, bud? Oh boy. Get them strapped on there. I was using my epic lights last night. Once you go, once you go epic light, you don't go back to black. Because it's so nice to be able to see them. You can see those little bites on those rods. You know if you got bait left on there. It, it's everything, man. Where yeah, are you we guys? We only have like three. In are the you place. at her house, Kelly, or is she at ours? Oh, you got to be at her house. She mixed my cotton candy pretty hot. That either means she likes you or she don't like you. It's been a long uh, time, Kelly. Since we moved down steam, stream, we've had a couple little hits here and there, and they're, they're spitting. They're kind of just acting like they want to kill the gills, and that's it. They're not, they're not taking them at all. Not Channel Cat, not Gar, Flathead. Hope they still act like Jackass. You can see part of our umbrella in the camera. Water temperature is really good still. We just moved up to a better current spot. <laughs> yeah, I got wire lights too, buddy. Lightsabers, yeah, Troy. Yeah, back in the day when I first started doing it, I'd I used to shine a little flashlight and lean it up and shine my tips of my rod. I went through a lot of batteries like that. Yeah, I got Patriot James Bobbers too lit up. I got the, the Bulls lit up. My uncle's got his lit up. We got purple ones, green ones, white epic lights, Patriot James Bobbers. People go by and they're like, what the hell are you guys doing? And it says my two 12 foot rods look like twin towers of light, yeah. I put mine on the lock bridge last night, the epic light I have, a pretty bright white one. And it's like, a, it was like my walkway light. Cause we're walking around just, just inches from falling 12 feet into the water <laughs> when I fished those locks at night. If you trip and fall in, you're, you're going to... I fell in one. See, an epic fell in once. He was walking next to somebody talking, and then on the side of the lock, there's a recess where the doors used to be, and he walked right off the edge of that. And said to myself, I can't believe I just fell in flat. <laughs> My canal water was 85 degrees. And climbing. Forty-five die-hard people still left in here. Thanks for hanging out. And I bet I, you know this time of day, I don't think they're all sleeping either.
Ah, yes, Abbott. We used to call that the golden hour. One hour left before he can go home. You know, I think I'm going to text my boss here in a little while and tell him I'll come down with something this whole next week. I got that SIBA. Crazy how these fish just turn on and off. lights are in them, or batteries are in them lights. The little watch batteries. Yeah, the little watch batteries. I don't know what number they are. Yeah. And if you don't leave them on, they lasted Sean and I an entire season. Except for the ones that I left on. Thanks, Kelly. Drive safe. <laughs> Troy says, Jim, what's the longest time you've had a fish hitting your bait without committing to it? Committed, they just didn't show anything. But you know, as far as hitting and spitting, usually only hit. Okay.
Bates and Wallace? Yep. Yeah, we just read it up Yes, sir. Yes, sir. go try to boat a fish. Yes, we need to take these guys down again, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Watch the cord.
Let's see who's left of it. Let's see who's not too old. Hey, there's Troy King. What's up, buddy? Just out here plugging around looking for a giant. I got me a pretty big one at the canal last night. 38 pounder. killing time right now and we're gonna go to this uh, sunken barge down here and we're gonna anchor up tonight on that and we're gonna see what we can get the classic spot for some big flatheads umbrella back over the phone here just right because uh, the phone was overheating. B3 custom tape. Yeah, what's up, bud? Jimmy Geiger still has that jet motor on there. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've been. I'm about done with the sun for the day. I, it needs to go down, but we still got uh, about an hour or two uh, to get to the water. Yeah, we got six flatheads today, a couple giant drum, and uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. within just minutes, man. Hell, one of them took the bait right in his hand as he was lowering it down. Yeah, Tiger, I love the smell of that piece of bait. Oh, 
on quite a bit. Don't on the cut me. Said wiggle wiggle. Don't go. There's 55 people still tuning in. Don't, don't set the hook. I ain't on it. Five people. Yeah. It's gonna be more entertaining because uh, it's not very really entertaining. Yet. I mean, it was really entertaining. Oh. Troy King says, "What's up, King guy? What's up, Troy King? Love you, man. When are you gonna come back up around? Are you gonna be playing with Silo anytime? Exactly. Go out there and get Silo. Tell him, tell him, make sure it's a Sunday this time." We can get the old, the, the wives, the old ladies together. Sunday evening. Because it's Saturday night, we're booked, so. Well, we'll have some flies open.
10 minutes. Go to fuck and do something dumb. This is actually fairly smart, but it's not working. But what we did before was fairly smart, so now we're going to do something too. Mississippi River rats are live. Let's hope they're fighting like better than ours. I think we got a different plan that's not as dumb as what I was thinking. My other plan, being dumb, was in the sun. Now we're gonna go do a dumb plan in the shade. Down in that tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yep. And the fish is flat I don't give a shit if it's seven or twelve foot. We'll do it. Let's do it. Here. Here. Here.
I like it. Oh, shit. Shade bite is where it's at. Let's see, we've got root ball sitting up in about four or five foot of water, but I like this one. Don't know what we're looking at. A little bit of a uh, storm cut. Yeah. Now there's a giant tree right in front of it. See it? Yeah. Yep. Underneath the water. situation. I'm not saying that it's going to be giant flathead, but there should be. Well, there will be. people we should have just like the last couple of spots that we finished at least this one's kind of comfortable to change so we are going to try and drill on this you know there's high wood and all kinds of crazy stuff uh but we are fishing somewhat close to it i'm going to put some rocks down i'm going to put some along the bank a little bit There's the sun fishing fast in here. Sun fishing fast is what's going on, brother. This is pretty good news. He comments on what everything we've got. All right, there it is. 61 people.
42. I think it's time to make a dog. Yes, sir. Michael, you know that? Yeah, we got cooked and baked and we've been trying and it's not working. Those are, those are better big fish spots than what we're on right now. But if they ain't biting, why do you want to fish for them? No, this is really nice sitting here. That's how we get in the wind. Yeah, I do. I need a big, I need a big flathead. We need it in the boat right now. Thirty pounder, thirty pounder, be real nice. so you guys can be in the mind of what I'm thinking about. Even though it's not working right now, most of the time it does.
Abbott said, God bless you. God bless me for what? Talking. Maybe he was a pretty God, God bless you. God, God bless you. <laughs> Sneezing like he snorted pepper. We ain't got no pepper. Ain't got no gas, eh? I'm gonna have to slam this donkey turn down. Get lightened up here. Lightened up. I got my I got my tub drug last night. I got my my I won the battle. I laid in bed in one thirty this morning still up on my donkey. I almost drink. called you because I knew up on my donkey drink, sitting there thinking about stuff. My heart's beating in my chest. I can't can't doze off. I'm, any other time I pass right out, but nope. I gotta go fish, and then I'm gonna go fish in the Mississippi River with you tomorrow. You know what I'm just like. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think I got to sleep. I think the best is yet. Two o'clock in the morning. It's going to be 8.30 to about 11. King, you ever caught spoonbills out there? Well, yeah. You should have seen, uh, you should have seen, uh, I don't know if we didn't have that on video. But not here. At Keokuk, at Keokuk, I had a, a small blue on. Yeah, it was small, like 20 pounds. Small blue on, and he was spinning around in the current, and as the line was spinning when I was bringing him in, it wrapped around the bill. Yeah, the proboscis. The proboscis of a spoonbill, a rostrum. It gets up by the boat, we're like, what the heck is that? Sure enough, I got a picture of sitting there holding up a, I don't know, 30 inch Yeah. Nice little one. And Palmetto Cats, Kevin says, well, <laughs> it's about dad gum time. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Kevin? Yes, sir, sir. What up, Kevin? We had a great beginning in a rough middle. I mean, a rough middle. And, you know, thanks for everybody sticking with us because uh, I don't know that I would have stuck with us. <laughs> we're not that entertaining when we're not catching fish, I don't think. I want my money back. I paid for the guide service. He <laughs> promised right. me a big fish. That's right. That's right. So we'll stay till morning. Hopefully this bite turn it just shut off and uh, hopefully it turns back on. We we started out, put four baits down and had four flatheads on four baits. Within 35 minutes, I think we had four or five fish. Yeah, yeah, we did. From, so for the first hour of fishing today, we had a six flathead, two giant drum. I mean, they're ridiculous. The one was what 28 inches long. <laughs> we caught a 28 or 27 inch drum. Oh yeah, Jimmy Staples. What's up, buddy? Yes, sir. I think I'm tentatively thinking we should at least give it till 11 o'clock tonight. Oh, yeah. And whatever happens, this this garbage fight is not going to last. Yeah. Not, not, not at this water temperature. But it's garbage right now. See, if you pull into something like this, you don't get bit in five, ten minutes. Fight's up. Now, I'm not saying we can't pull one off in there. Paul Meadows says, Dad and I spent the day cleaning up the shark fishing gear and finding supplies to make a monster leader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds epic. Get a wire. 
So, if anybody is uh, guessing, yes, I'll be singing the Jaws song tonight. Even fish, eh? Don't you tell me my business, Hoopa. But I never sing the Jaws song when the bite's off. When I know it's coming. Captain's Law. After baking in the sun all day <laughs> with a promising bite, the bite has turned to shit. I could see Sean getting long in the face and being <laughs> a right. puss, that's and right. I want to get a fish in his hand. That's right. Mark his tone up. That's right. He starts getting that little little puss look on his face. His bottom lip starts coming out. He wants big fishy. I need to see big fishy out here. You have been catfish. Dude, we got it. Start it. I have doubts in my mind for the height and the We need to stick a big fat head peg to that big wide body. It's like a forehand. You know, I'd settle for a 50, you know. <laughs> Troy King says, eat a damn Snickers. I'm getting to be a diva out here. Dude, that sun was bearing down on me. Oh, yeah. I got my chubby white legs out. I think the one thing I got was like just on my just on my knees I got a little red right there. Oh, 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 this sun's killing me. Oh, this sun was. Bite. I think the uh, sun. Oh. I think the sun burnt the sunblock off my ears. Oh, it did. I could feel my ears down and rubbed it off. He's a damn Snickers. <laughs> I should have brought some Snickers. I had a bunch of cookies earlier. Put a Snickers sure. in the cooler and snap a tooth off out here. Fuck yeah, we got like yeah. 22 on the left. <laughs> I have succeeded in becoming a toothless nobility. So, congrats. Dude, you? I got brought real nuts. <laughs> you get your tooth stabbed out by a catfish. Oh yeah, and the other one got Come on. so damaged that it eventually fell out. I'm like, what? Yes, sir. See the bulge on the water? Yeah. Completely dangerous to throw there because that tree on the bank. Look, that tree, and we can't get to the actual root ball of the whole frog. So, five, five minutes. Let a bunch of anchor rope out. That's right, we're going to. Put the ass yep. of the boat on that one vertical. Yep. Fish like river certified in his kayak right in the right 15 in the foot of water <laughs> and then we hook one, one and go right up and in he's the ground. Swim up between yep. a fork in the branch. Yep. We're gonna have him on there and we're gonna be hit. But it's still sparking tell I by curious and fixed my attitude by hooking a fish I knew I couldn't land. Yep. I've done it before. Hanging him in the woods. I can kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Sixty-one hardcore cat fishermen. Yeah. The best of the best. The cream of the crop. Uh oh. Waiting on that. Dig down. Dig down. Dig down. Waiting on it. There you go. Spit and spit. Terrible.
Yes, sir. Yeah, we didn't quite get out here before the sunrise. No. Nope. Maybe the early morning bite was the key. Yeah, I don't know. Even when we get Done, son. Oh, what have I done, dude? Nope. Yeah. Oh, boy. Bad. Jungle fishing here. Bad zoo in the jungle. Dude. Waiting on a snag now. Oh, I got this one off there. Ain't got any bait on it. Probably not now. I just jerked it off. <laughs> yeah. Okay, down. Okay, down. Wait a little Beautiful out here right now. Yeah. Still so good to be out of that bacon phone. This time was intense today. Oh. Yeah. No take down. Okay. No take down. Now you guys can see it. This was a fresh bait. Um, you can see where it's been completely scaled up here. I mean, there's no scales left. So we've got bites, but so indiscernible. They're just lack of days like uh like my youngest son eating his green beans like yeah you know, not really that great yeah we're, we're using cut bait and live gills and the live gills were fire this morning but they're not that great right now and i don't think anything would be Let's start a poll. Is Epic going to get these back? Do you snag? We're drifting back and we're going to get over the top of them, maybe. Number one, remove. Nice. Save the bait. Now, that one there. We're off kilter here. No, but 
Yeah, it's high wood. Yeah, it's we didn't get any real great bites here anyway. We would have, like, so yeah. We didn't. We're not going back in the oh, sun, are we? No. Not yet. Is that anchor dragging at all? No, oh, man. Okay. Start to drag, let me know, and I'll drive. Probably in wood already. The, the count is six flatheads, buddy. And yeah, we're still at it. We, we've had a uh, rough patch middle of the day. Right up here has a problem. Tough bite and Sean's getting pouty. <laughs> pouty Sean. We got a bigger car. Alright, buddy. Thanks for coming in, bud. Somebody leaving? No, oh, Troy's gonna eat supper and he's gonna be good. Troy King. What you looking at? Thanks, buddy. Drive safe, Kelly. Alright. What do you think? We're gonna do something even dumber. See this garbage right here? Even dumber? the anchor rope a little? No, like a little. Alright. Hold on to it fast now. Hard. Uh, let it settle it back in. We're going to fish this straight down underneath this thing. It's uh, 13 foot out over here and it's like 5 foot here. So there's a ledge and it's all sitting in the bank. Tire off right there. Give us a little more rope. A little more rope. Because the afternoon has to be back on to this thing. He's going to throw us right into that. Tire right here. You like it? Yep, I like it. Now, this is getting creative right here. We've got five foot, a five foot ledge that is like just to the right of the motor where that sits. And then it pounds right down into 12 feet. I mean, pounds right down into 12 feet. So this ought to be great. But I'm not saying the bite's going to be great. I'm 
why we can't use more positions. I'll get the position to a lot shallower. Okay, so hopefully you set it right up in your first. Oh, yeah. All right. One stop. All right, all right, all right. I think this spot is the only thing. Well, that's it. Well, that's it. What you got? Yeah. You. Oh, boom, 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 Palmetto Cat, $5 for the Let's Go Fed. Let's go. Yes, sir. Boom, boom, boom. Like we like to say on the boat, bang, bang. <laughs> Yeah, Tiger, we got one little brush grip, but we threw the anchor up here around a bunch of shit. We're kind of nestled in here. Yeah, this is tight quarter stuff here. So if this goes down, oh yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on. You can't miss. You can it'll go up and into that. get bit here and you the bite How wide is that boat? Your boat? Eight foot. And if it was any narrower, what I do on the Mississippi, we'd be swamped. You know, I'd like that to be all too, being in like 50 feet of water. Yes, sir. 
that set and see if anybody will strike. Anything better? Maybe a fast Yeah, that's going to be our hope. It's not a hope on the final. It's going to be our hope. Yeah, it's going to be our hope. Yeah, it's going to be our hope. Yeah. 7-14. Oh, come on. Big job. Big job. I think I don't know. And I'm right on your lip. It's got ass chichers and face chichers. <laughs> and chichers from both ends. You just got your chin. It's <laughs> got a big, ugly abdomen yeah. flying like this. Yeah. Whole thing weighs like a half a pound. Oh, a nightmare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Mm-hmm. 
Their lives, yeah. their lives succumb to light bites yeah. and suffocating hold, but no take. Yeah. Just down there with a the stranglehold, that's all they're doing. Even flat, and killing for spite. Oh, yeah, is right. Like Dr. Hook said, I was in the right place, but must have been the wrong time. <laughs> I think we're in the right place. Hmm. We're having a good time. It's definitely the right place. The hour of suck is done. The hour of luck is upon. Or in Tim and Sean's case, the hour of skill. Oh, oh. Whoa. 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 Here we go. Here we go. We have a Hold on to your skill. seats, boys and girls. I think it's going to get good. Well, I like your attitude, Warren Scott. I think it's going to get good too. All we want is we, we want a giant. That's all we're asking for. We've been out here four weeks in a row on this river, this mighty river. We've anchored on some of the coolest, best flathead stuff you've ever seen.
Lord have mercy. Oh, got it. Oh, awesome. Sinker slider. You know, last night I got all excited and we had all we had all of our bait. I start rigging up my rods and I got these Patriot James bombers. So I get over there and I'm skillfully I'm I'm hooking her all up and trying to get it just right and I get the depth set right on it and I know right where I want to put it. I go over to bucket and grab me a nice donkey that's going to give me some swimming. I get down there in the spot on the lock where I wanted to put it. I throw it down right into a snag. <laughs> it wasn't in the water for a minute and I'm snagged up. And luckily something, luckily something cut the leader line and I got it all back except for the hook. That was nice. So then I had to stay away from that. So. Later that evening, I hook into this giant flathead. Well, not giant, but pretty damn big. Sub 40 pounder. We'll call him that. He's 38 pounds. And he's fighting me. And I stop and I, I put the brakes on him and he's pulling drag and stuff. He's swimming right for that snag. Oh. Luckily, I got up onto him and I kind of I put the muscle on him to keep him up in the top three feet of the water column and got him over the top of him. But it's just funny how the damn things know. Oh, yeah. I think they know. They, they swim towards shit out there in the canal. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Yep. <laughs> it's gonna suck to get to. Huh? I said it's gonna suck to get to. You're on all that crap. people in here.
most massive tree. This whole thing is tree after tree after tree. Well, I, I want to do it uh, because it's going to be like, we're going to be like high on there with dead water. I see it's kind of dead there. Huh? It's kind of dead there. Yeah. Uh, I see it. It's just on the right thing though. Right. I see it out far enough. Yeah. It's like a good idea to do that. Right? Hey, there's Aaron Gibbons, man. What up, Aaron? It was pretty hot, Aaron, earlier. Uh, we got about six flatheads in the boat, of course, the hour. And then now we've been searching for hours on end in the sun. Kind of bite went south, but we're hopeful uh, we'll get something later. We'll all get a big one.
So it's nine foot of water underneath the boat. A little bit, I mean, not even a foot or two left. It's 13 foot of water. Five foot on this shelf is a mass three foot foot. It should be a shoe in. We'll see. Twenty-nine people. This is not a, this is not a spot to spend a whole lot of time on. You hear it or you're not.
under that tree and fish over the mother gardens first. Yeah. Yeah. 
30. <laughs> really?
Stock positive. He says this looks like another juicy spot. He says. Yeah, it does. Yep, and we've been That's doing the that. Seventh juicy spot we've been to since this morning. All up and down the river, bud. Mike, till the flat hits that. Come on, Flathead. Let's go. Yeah, Warren, I'm trying to stay positive, but I can use a little help here. All right, Warren, we're, we're trying. And uh, when, when listening to the fish, when they tell you that they just nibble and spit, that's a little bit rough. But we're, we are keeping an open mind, because I've seen this, I mean, in my 40 years of fly day fishing, or 35 years of fly day fishing. I've seen it go from this to a pretty darn good bite as the sun's going down and then a couple hours it ends at night. Normally on the late pre-spawn, it's almost all day bite. But if you get a big lull like this, it usually picks up around dark to a couple hours after. And uh, actually proved that on a live uh, last year with Mark Knox. It was, it was still pre fall I don't think it, it wasn't August, I don't think. Uh, and we set up on the big, which, which we're planning on uh, doing. We're going to we're gonna go into the big, the big sunken ship and put some donkey baits down and hope, uh, you know, we uh, contact the monster. Now, for everybody at home, usually spots like this are about a 10 minute bite. Especially if you can get this place to cover and you can throw some good baits down there and go. But this is not, it's not what we're doing. And usually we don't really see the super, you know, spawn to where they don't bite until about July 4th. Up, up in this Well, you know, I'm just messing around. Yeah. Yeah, man, we're with you, though, buddy. Yeah. Said I'm still enjoying the heck out of this. Thanks for taking us on yeah. an epic journey. Well, thanks for Warren, riding along with Warren, us, man. We, we love you, Warren, because you've always got something great to say. You're like the first one to comment on stuff, and the last one, you always you always have a, a you know, a, a, a good clap or a or whatever. And it's been like that from day one. Jimmy Giggers, Geiger says, uh, how long are you guys staying out? I think we're going to see, if, we're going to see uh, tentatively 10, 11, we'll see. We're going to listen to the fish and see what we can do. Yeah. As soon as that light change happens and if nothing's happening. I, I always like to give it at least a 10 o'clock, no matter yep. what. Yep. 10, 30, I've caught many a nice giant at 10, 10, 30 at night. In a little spot, it's high fish. There's a bite. There is a bite, Sean. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. 
go up and do the top of that tree. Up there at the big cars, that tree yeah. we tap to.
Why does it look like the west of that tree sticking out? Like there's a tree that's missing. Flathead of legend live.
I threw it in it or behind it. Hopefully it's behind it. Sir Warren. Yes, sir. Yeah. <coughs> PJ, what's go, man? Yeah, what's PJ good? Now. Yeah. Uh -oh. Let's go, Bars bike. Oh my god, they went out to that hoarder's house. <laughs> Did you see, see they were road tripping with girls? Can oh. I take you by that hoarder's house out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's Chris and Full Food next to it. They stopped. They stopped and went They stopped and posed next to this corner of the garbage out of this house. Uh, oh, I think I did. to be here even though the bite has not been that great there's been and i keep saying this too there's been many times when the bite wasn't that great and then we move into here and catch them up so let's hope that happens Big giant. Yep. 
I say it's going to take the last of the car. Duggar, no slobs yet. That's what we're going to get here in a few minutes. Jose Vega, nice to see you guys fishing again. He's missing you. Yeah. Thanks, bud. I love it. Yeah, we, we like being on here, too. TJ, what's happening, bud? You got a tournament? Are you handling your bag all right? Your bag? Kelly speaks out says 15 minutes is going to be a big down. Big down. I was going to be green. I was just not sure where we're at. So now I can't fish all day. Probably agree. Okay, TJ said yes. Yes, got home. Got second. Nice. PJ, no, if you ain't first, you're last. You're the first, and if you're in second place, you're the first one to lose. Oh, where, oh, where did my donkey drink go? There that sucker is. How's the old shoulder feeling yet? Like shit? Not to be expected. To be expected. Old tire. Old arthritic shoulder. Oh yeah, I didn't see that. Kelly speaks out. Boom, bang, bang Again? with the super chow. No, this is the one before we never did shout her out. Oh yeah. Kelly speaks out. She gives us the five dollars to give us a good round number up there. There's nice. there, there's a total right there up there in the center oh, wow. for the day. Wow. That's oh, awesome. Wow. Appreciate we gotta, we gotta catch Appreciate cow. every we single catch one of you. Fish. Let's go. I gotta get some of that has enthusiasm. <laughs> the enthusiasm that never stops. No, oh, yeah. Because the rods are always <laughs> going off. Awesome. We love has. Has don't get time to get that long face. No, pace. we don't. It's we always get the long face with that. Well, I'm swimming along the bottom. See it? Yeah. Something kind of big. Guys. And 155 likes, too. That's nice. Yeah. 155 likes. Let's see if we can get that number up to 200. Smash that like button. We want to get that stand 222. Yeah, I saw Jeremy. I mean, right there. There's, there's some fresh ones sticking in that. Go down? Yep. Eight? Yeah. Here without 
lucky arrowhead is in the truck. I think that's the best thing you said yet. Just bust out the cigs, have another drink. Who cares if we're catching fish? It's a party oh. on the water now. Look at that thing. It's like Ooh. a pocket. Look at it. Did you see the big swollen head on that thing? Yeah. Look at that big bump head. It's a big bold gill. Big bold gill going down. Wild turkey. Been with you all day because I think it's going to break loose and the fight when we open fast. Go, Jimmy Strong. Thanks. Thanks for riding along with us, guys. We started out hot, and then we were not. <laughs> Let's go. Bumping uh, Tim Greenwell over here. Mm -hmm. He's doing a little back bumping. As much as I can with 12 ounces of weight. Yep. Yep. Bump it down. A hundred pound flat would be the best gift for Father Yes, sir. Well, out of any spot in the river, this is about the best shot at it. Yeah, this is serious area over here. Let's go. Right, <laughs> you stop. You got some good questions. Epic. What's the biggest bait used in a small catfish caught on that you've ever seen? <laughs> I have caught a five pound flat on a sucker like that. Just dumb, like a dumb sucker like that big around when I back in the day when I used to be huge bait. Probably wasn't even hooked, you just latched one. So actually, it, it got all the way up to the hook because oh. I let it take it and take it and take it. Now, the other one, the most obvious one, is like 12 inch white bass because I used to go up and throw and I used to get 12 inch white bass. And I'd throw those out and invariably, almost every single time, you get a 15, 20 pounder just barely be able to choke that thing. I get small flat heads up to now and they'll the bluegill will be bigger and wider than their mouth but they'll have it stuffed in there for yeah. and uh, they're, 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 they're. until last night I said I thought that bluegill was active swimming around the lock and yeah. there it was the whole time he had somebody grabbed onto his, his tail and was swimming him around real slow no literally Uncle Jeep what do you mean he just landed a shark creel Go away. Really just landed a shark? Really a shark? Nice. Or a shark sized blue? Yeah. Oh, okay. I take control with another crazy thumbnail. Like, yeah, what is that?
don't you small one. You can keep grabbing a fish or trying to find the back of the head. That's what's been biting this hook. Yep. You got sharks up in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Oh, boy, that is good. Creel's catching bull sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty Mississippi. Yep. It ain't real little bitty, actually. It's like about a 30 pound shark. Mississippi strikes again. You know what I did to you? We got every round out. We got every round out. Got his belly meat. What does Danny Stone know? He knows Danny. Danny knows a little bit about anything. Danny Stone. Yep, seen it. Mr. Barillo. Yes, sir, I just went and looked at it. 48 inches long. Four footer. 45 footer. It had doll's eyes. Like a doll's eye. Don't seem to be living until it bites you. And they roll over white. Bite your hand clean off. It will. Rip. At the wrist. Whoa! That's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Woo! Done spill now. Spill the old donkey drink. Pretty good. Not everybody left ours to go watch the shark at least. I think some stuff's fixing to happen. I didn't either. I didn't bring a jacket. No, nothing. What a loser. Oh, I got this. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. <laughs> that thing's been in there since last season. No doubt, Uncle G. I'm never going swimming where Creole is. Gators, sharks, snapping turtles. Too much teeth for me. This poor thing. No. If, if no, I you're not putting it, it on. It, you're not going to need it. <laughs> you can have my sweatshirt. Like no shirt at all. You, you can have, have my sweatshirt. Shirt. All right, this thing's horrid. Woo. Look at that. I got from last, last season. <laughs> I got pants. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. You would smell like that. You could have smelled like the you're mushroom. You're right, Uncle G. smells like the mushroom factory. I jump in there and he just starts gnawing the fat right off my gut and hit <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm all for rapid weight loss, but not that way. No point. Yeah, well, turkey, you know what it smells like. 
mold. The, the oh, highest yeah. quality of like a mold. Mushroom factory. It's been molding in the bottom of that cooler all year. Yeah. All winter. Here they go. We saw them put out. Sound like big blocks, four pitch fours, wind. Oh man! All right, everybody. What do you say? Ring, ring! It's dinner time for muscle catchers. That's what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Sounds like Kelly uh, bit off a little bit more than she could chew with the uh, herbs off the drink at home. Uh -oh. She had her sister mixing it. Ooh, that's not good. And it came in a little hot on her. Mm -hmm. Didn't do too well for her. Uh oh. She's not seasoned. She like laying on the floor. <laughs> She's on the couch watching us on the big TV. Okay. Yeah, there was there was like one time that I, I didn't go with them or two times, but I was sitting there trying to watch as they're fishing the bridge up there. And every time I heard this motor start up, I'd go try, I'd go try to lay down as soon as the motor start up or something. They were moving. I had to jump up and go stand in front of the TV. They're moving again. They're moving again. What's going on? What are they doing? I wouldn't be surprised, no doubt. He's hooking the swamp thing down there. Funny, uh, when you're out fishing, oh, where's your man at? Is he out on the water? What's he doing, Phil? She can sit right there on the couch and watch me real time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Big drummy. <laughs> Sunfish is passing that both shark didn't pull him away from a weapon catfish. He's still watching. I ain't gonna lie, I just up there and looked at it. That thing was pretty awesome. That is badass. Fifty-six people in here. 160 thumbs up.
thanks to Michael Marillo and everyone who chatted out today. We're trying to earn our super chips. We're trying to get a big fish in the boat for everybody. Fishing, cooking with Mike Chavez. Get her done, fellas. We're trying, buddy. It's not for a lack of effort. Big Mike, we had a good start, six flatheads, and nothing since, and we've been uh, been everywhere, been everywhere, man. We caught some, we caught six, uh, six flatheads and then a couple epic drums. <laughs> Big gummy. Yeah, we have plenty of good bait. Yeah, man, we just want one giant.
the that's the wave that he was shoving before he even got here. Yeah. Yeah, we're not. I think we're just going to stick on this. We've had people stick with us today. We're not going to do that. Well, oh, look at this wave. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. The weather started getting rough. I need to put off. If not for the... And the brush grabber and it's little nylon rope. <laughs> it's little <laughs> nylon rope. It's Woo. kind of dry rotted <laughs> and probably isn't gonna hold. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> it's holding, dude. The fearless brush grabber wouldn't be tossed. You know how old that thing is? I think I was like 22 when I got that. You should see this faded nylon rope and this brush grabber oh, yeah. holding this in place here. That was amazing. It was amazing. The rope looks like you drug it behind the vehicle on the on road. That, now we can take on anything. Let's yeah. go. Exactly. Come on, do it. So, so yeah. that, that rope looks like it got drugged behind the truck for like 5,000 miles. It looks like it's been laying in the floatsum for like it has. 20 years. Yeah. That's the original rope, I think. <laughs> like when I was like 22 years old. They don't make nothing like that anymore. You, know, you buy a new nylon you know. rope, they'd snap clean off. Clean off. What do you say? Oh yeah, it snaps like sewing thread. Sewing thread. You don't make anything like they used to. Nope. Oh my god, dude. We, we, we had a glove here. I think we just ram our boat on top of the damn thing. I've done it. it. I've done it before, but you can't do it when, when, the, when the big snow goes through. Nope. Yeah. 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 Eight forty-seven. Yeah, there's nothing. Happening. It's time for Don to drink number three. There's a fucking yeah, right that's the giant. I think we're going to gear up here for one of our last few moves of the night. We are going to uh, stage up on this cracking half beach, half beach on the bottom barge over here. It's not sticking up out of the water like uh, it has in the past when you've seen these live. Maybe eight inches or so. But uh, we're going to try to do a creative anchor over there to get on that. Tinkerbell, what's happening? Thanks for coming in. It says there are 63 people in here. There's old Mark Knott, Kelly Speaks Out, Wild Turkey, Bob from Jacksonville, TX Tiger, Big Mike, Warren Stock, of course, riding, riding or dying, and uh, Sunfish Assassin. Sir Mark Knott, whoa, Tinkerbell, that's going a little far there. Oh, 
home, I'll take a goat bite. Um, I'll smoke it and take that home. Hey, and people drop some litter in for litter in the water down there. The bottle floats around. Look at donkey back. He says he don't care if he loses every single rig. We're going into this barge, and we're just going to send some bluegills down. They're going to be like Jacques Cousteau down there. We're going to go down to the beach, explore the wreckage. Got it. I think we try to sit on the inside. Oh yeah. There it is, There's folks. There's the grabber. Yep. All right.
Watch that fish line real carefully. What are you looking at? 13 feet. 14 feet. Okay. I got a real hard bottom. Yep. Yeah, because it's all metal. Metal.
this up just enough. Yep. So un unleash what I already did. Okay. Yeah, I did. I got okay. It. So tie it up. You ready? Yep. This is why I was telling you. Oh, that's beautiful, man. Just trying to forget that happened. Huh? Just trying to forget that happened. That's all I'm trying to do. That sucks. You don't get opportunities like that. Yeah, that's an opportunity. Yeah. Crazy how that works. Man. Fishing, fishing, fishing. You go right to the right spot and then bang. He had the Grugio crust right yeah. behind the hook.
pressure button all the time for this one. Because this. Yeah, Joe, we just missed. We had a nice takedown. You don't get good takedowns like that every day. No, I Reeled on him and he just he was biting my behind the hook. Joe, he, he smoked it and held it down like 14 inches. That was, it, was, it just stayed down. I had his puck, I just felt it slip right out of his mouth. What a beautiful evening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks lighter in the on here. Oh, yeah, that looks lighter. We're going to get into it. Man, dude, that one hurts. It does. Oh, that hurts. Terry Stanfield, I'm here finally to watch my favorite live fishing. Well, welcome, buddy. Hopefully you came at the right time, because we just had a nice takedown, and the bluegill was bit right behind the hook. I pulled it right out of his mouth. This is big fish territory, folks. So, we are anchored inside a sunken barge that is in 20 foot of water. One side sticks up because it used to be it used to be a shallow area that was deep in front, peaked high, and then went down. So one side of it, and the barge is actually used to be straight, now it's broken in half like this and tilted down into the water. And it's actually at the edge of the main chain. I do not prefer fishing it this way, but since the drop is gone, this is about the only way you can contact the giant. Way riskier than when it was in there. barge went by here was going downstream they really didn't yeah I, I know with the barge going downstream yeah. hey 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 yeah oh no yeah. it's bad oh he's there he's there oh look at the head shakes on that thing get it up come on get it up come on come get it up oh my god dude it's a monster let's go I saw the wavelength of the Buddy, that was it's huge. That's a four foot fish. Damn, dude. Oh, man. All right. I saw the head shakes on that thing, and it was a. It was going. Rent, rent. Look, dude. It had that thing like four foot into the bar. Right here. It's not scrapey, oh. but see, right here, when it's like this. this that's that right there. I know. Oh yeah. Dang. Oh, you were you were hogging the cutter up here. I was hogging his ass. Hogging his ass. All right. Oh, that was huge. Oh, 
shit. That, my friends, was a super monster right there. The kind that you have pictures of and everybody says, Oh my God, where did you catch that? Well, this is where we catch that. Now, there's almost nothing you can do in a situation like that when you catch him when he can dive underneath the cut edge of a broken bar. You just have to get lucky enough to where he'll either go back, which he didn't, he was coming forward. Because I hesitated a little bit to notice, and I just had no choice. All right. Hopefully that's not the only shot. Now, a lot of people would think, well, power line. Well, that power line wouldn't keep you out. You wouldn't even be able to keep that amount of pressure on power line. And here's the problem. Without, without the drop there, these fish are unwilling to come out. I've had to go to this every time since that drop got washed away in about, geez, when was that last one? 2012, something like that. 2014, something, something, something like that. Okay. All right. See what everybody said. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yep, I just, I saw them head shakes, man. That was a giant. Yeah. I'm going to get, I'm going to switch to a higher power test. That was a giant. Giant. Sometimes you win it, sometimes you lose it, but damn. Oh, there he is. Yes, I have switched to airplane type wire. Aircraft wire in here. It didn't do good. Okay. 
yes, we're fishing inside of it. Mm. Yep. Ripping lips is too weak. All right. Cat fishing with Taz, welcome. Kelly Bullock. Welcome, Austin Finner. Yep, we just got uh, broke off a couple times in the barge here. Big fish, big fish. It's a fish story now.
Nice, Austin. Look at that sky. That's a gorgeous picture right there. How are you guys liking that picture? That is absolutely beautiful. That is that is gorgeous. He turned up one now. Oh, That's a beautiful picture. You can all agree with that, I'll bet. Oh, we contacted a monster. Dusk on the Mississippi River. Let's go. Yes, sir, Warren. been on an adventure today. It was hot and it was cold. Then it was hot. They did well, they still did. It's exciting because you know what's out here and yeah. what can possibly happen. It's also exciting because you know that it's a high possibility. <laughs> Inside this bar, there is a massive amount of wood here, too. Like on the back corner and all that. Morales, Texan, Texas fishing. Good hey. luck and greetings from San Antonio, Texas. Dude, he was like one of our original. Thanks for coming in, buddy.
first video. Oh, one or two. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, there, there was water changers, water, but there was something. Sixty-three people hanging in here still. This stupid thing says eighty-eight. This is sixty-three. Yeah. Get one of these big things up in here, man. Bonafield. What? Are you still running my brother's old boat? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I didn't know he had a brother. Tell Jason I said hi. Cody Grotz fishing. Going for hippo blues or flatties tonight? Flatties. It's been all day flatties into the night. We got six flatties boated. No monsters. He got broke off twice now. In this bar, he had a huge one on. Yeah. It had the big head shakes, about a foot stroke, every head shake, monster. And yeah. it snapped it clean off in here, like sewing thread. We're fishing a sunken barge, and they're down in there. And uh, we're going to play hell getting them out. <laughs> but we've been to every kind of wood. Yeah. Every, all kinds of stuff we've been this afternoon and they weren't biting us out at all. We knew we had to be here at night and uh, we're here.
stone to 100 pound test meters cannot go. Ah, this thing sucks. It's a sour something, is it? Tastes like old lady perfume and <laughs> fucking chemicals. Like Doris Woods perfume. Tastes like old Avon stale perfume. <laughs> and something Aquanet. else. Aquanet. Aquanet. <laughs> old stale Avon perfume. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. Oh. Don't get me wrong, we've caught some normal size ones in here too, but that one is not normal size. Yeah, Kelly, we did.
Alright, I'm ready for another shake now. Let's go. I got those other ones on my head, kind of. I'll still that was good. Yeah. 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 Seventy-six people in here. Let's go. Let's get out of these things down. We gotta get a big fish in the boat. So far as the agony is the Yep. Yeah, Aaron, we got snapped off by a nice big one here a little bit ago. I know, take down, miss. Snapped off by a four footer. Get Sean, Chris, yeah, we're doing alright. We've had a good day. Six flat heads in the boat. Got what we wanted so far. Yeah, we got a good day. We're still trying. We'll probably have to give her another hour and a half out here. Dave Smith with the boom five dollar. Sitting in Arkansas. And here lost him. And sounds like epic. Sure enough, you guys are live. Again, boys. Glad to see you out. Man, thanks for coming in, man. Thank you, thank you.
Thanks for coming in, Aaron. Possible we should have fished over here in the clear and waited for them to come to us, but they just weren't coming. Maybe we should have waited a little So there's a whole bunch of second guesses going in my own way. You know, when, when it was structurally different, I could feel comfortable over there and not have to fish over the top of the mountain.
started out and then something that but that was also when there was a drop. And it really helps with the drop because the drop got the drop. Been a tough day. We got six flatheads today. Not much of a bite this afternoon, and we got on this uh, sunken barge here. We got broke off a couple times. A real decent fish. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be hard to pull them up out of here if we can. But uh, there's the monster. This is the monster area. No cockeyed, it's not. Six is certainly not a good point. No. Are you sure what the monsters were looking for? But no, you're right. Quiet head fishing. All done harder work. No 
Oh, Daryl. You're right. No shame in that. But we ain't done yet. Let's see what happens here in the next hour. <laughs> yeah. Boat looks wide enough to see up a string of a couple cameras. That's what I like about this. Ryan, it's not great. We just got busted off by a pretty big one. Kick down cat machine. Hello, Bob, epic Bob control. It's been a good day. Beautiful day out here on the water. Six flatheads and a couple big gummies and we just got busted off by a big one right here in this barge. It's gonna take a miracle for us to get one up out of here. Yep.
Number seven.
All right, everybody, all that heartache, missing them huge fish, and we catch Tinkerbill. So, at least, hopefully, it is a fishy mark knot. This thing was like buried in a snag, and this thing picked it off the snag and then moved it out. All right. That was snagged up bigger so, than shit. Oh, bigger than Dallas. I couldn't get it out. Oh. <laughs> All right. Do that again, only bigger. Uh -oh. Man, I'll tell you what, these circle hooks will catch anything. Hey, yeah, white one. Just kind of like tip a little bit. Right. That one hanging in the water. I got it hanging in the water. It's fucking over there. That calls the fish in. You get a lot better shot if you just call the wood than the way you throw it out. Nice. Nice. You like that?
they all notice me not moving stuff around a lot like I normally do. Like even if I'm near the wood, if, if I know I'm not like right on like a high stuff, maybe it's some low stuff, I'll still skip that stuff around so that a flathead will notice that bait. And some days it pays off huge. But and, and I wish I could do it in here, but there's no way. It, it would be kind of suicide to do it in here. Except for this left rod here, it's a tiny little wide open. The biggest hole is that like a four to five foot flathead comes up out all busted apart. Oh yeah. Out of the sunken water, and gets one of these short down the right with metal busting in. You ready for a split shoot yet? Or are you here? So whatever that was in, the book was caught because I could feel the thing. Or, or did I break that off? I think I broke it off from the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you did. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's Tiger Shaw, where did you get that O-B-E-Y-N Dennis headlamp? <laughs> uh, yeah. He's a gynecologist. Well, that's and a also, job. My, uh, my uncle that I fished with at the canal, he's also like an electronic dude. He stuck, these, uh, he stuck these red LEDs in here. And it's, I was missing out on that last night. We were on the other side of the canal trying to find a big fish. And, land it, do everything else. If you don't have a red light out there at this time of year, you, you're pretty much inhaling uh, bugs. Yeah. Red lights are everything. Like we, the bugs on the river are bad right now. I mean, if it was a mayfly hatch, it would be horrible. But we don't know. I mean, they did find it. Kelly speaks out still watching. Got all that bang residual flowing through her veins. Yeah, it is. Cheers, to everybody hanging out with us. Yeah. We're trying to get a monster, you know that. I think I missed a little sunblock right here on the top of that knee, yeah. Yeah. I haven't had any color on my legs for like two years. This is boring, man. Fracture fix, what's up, man? Again? It's either a straight down or probably going to port from there. There it goes. We're literally sitting right on top of a barge, it's kind of cracked in half. We're sitting on the inside lip of it, and the barge is like straight under us, so 
Yes, more in stock, I give you a rinse, bud. Who is it? <laughs> Warren, Warren Stock. Warren Stock. He, was, he yeah. wasn't a, it wasn't a moderator. And I moderated oh, yeah. him up. There's Robert James. Robert James. Yes, sir. Ziggler got him a wrench. Yeah. I don't know how long he's had it. I don't know if I just gave him another one. Yes, sir. Yeah, seven flatheads today. Not the Giants we're looking for and that we want to hold up for you guys, but we've had a good day. It's been tough this afternoon, we know that happened. We came in here and had a Giant on. Yeah. Guess what? Snapped off. Break the bar. Yep. Emotional damage. It is emotional damage. <laughs> I'm going to be thinking about this for a while. Lord, that's nasty. I'll never get that bang again. <clears throat> Fracture trick. Here's my $20 question. I was waiting for the $20 super chat to pop up, too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Here's my $20 question. Epic, what reels do you use for those two pound coffee can sinkers, man? Uh, not these. Um, these are my midline anchor, I mean, sorry, Bob, real. The other ones that I use are the giant, the huge, um, what are they called, contenders, or, uh, I mean, they're big. I mean, they're, they're like, they're like that big around. Um, I also have a Burning Star Core 2, and I also have, oh, what's the, the big fancy one that everybody talks about these days? Uh, what is that? Uh, you know, pen? the gold, but yeah, the pen or something. Pen squall. Pen squall. I've got one of those. Uh, I used to use uh, pen 330 GTIs, if you know anything about those. Those were stupid things. But they would that pull one? in a truck. Oh, oh, look. He just went down, down. <laughs> look, and he just stayed. What? While you're down there. That's the one that, you uh... You popped completely up with a 12 pounds. Brian Foothill gave you yeah. one, the yeah. non-level one. Yeah. yeah. That burning shark reel that yeah. co-truck brought there, that's the one that I lost the 300-pound yeah. blue last summer. He had to be 350. He was probably 120 inches long. And... He just swam where he wanted to. And I cried like a little girl. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's Fracture Fix with the super chat. Boom, 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 boom and bang. 
ten dollars. Thanks. Here's a gallon of gas. Appreciate <laughs> you, buddy. Appreciate you. My Appreciate goodness. Appreciate it, buddy. Appreciate everybody tonight. Oh everybody, yeah. Everybody, everybody. Thanks for hanging with us. We're trying to stay positive out here. Let's go. Down. Waiting on the four stop. That is live for over 10 hours. <laughs> that is live for here. Living live for over 10 hours. At it for well over that counting travel. Securing bait and other preparations. That's right, buddy. That's what it's about. <laughs> yes. You might be able to get two gallons of gas if you put that corn peel in. Which I don't know what the difference is. It just has ethanol. No, it's it's, it's 87 octane. Yeah. It's and it's not. Probably not. Probably a big lie. And it, it costs less, but it's more. One no alcohol, it was like 533, and the other was like 471. God! That Sour Patch Bang is terrible. <laughs> terrible. That's terrible. He's like old ladies perfume and Lysol. <laughs> Like, remember that shit? But I drank it down like a champ. <laughs> remember that shit they oh. used to wash the? Remember that shit they used to wash the uh, uh, the the grade school gymnasium and shit? Oh with? yeah. Like, and we got another bang bang. Woo. Joe Ziegler, Joe hang Ziegler. in there, guys. Thanks for the show today. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out. means a lot. You guys, it's awesome. Yep. Yeah, I got you, Mark. Ah, here's that, Warren. Best fishing show on YouTube. There's no, there's no one quite, there's no quitting these guys, I can't read. They've been uh, at it for over 10 hours and are still giving their all to catch a monster. It doesn't get any better than this. Appreciate you, buddy. Warren and everybody, appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Give you a little Hannah Barron. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> Do I look like Hannah Barron? No. <laughs> maybe know. She, maybe she doesn't shave. Yeah. <laughs> maybe she Puts had the a, wrong end. Maybe she got in a fucking horrible car accident. <laughs> you look like if she was you look eat, like Hannah Barron if she if ate she was, her sister. <laughs> like if, she, ate the whole if thing. she was eaten by a ogre. <laughs> or she ate an ogre. Uh, <laughs> Yep. We're short on food, so let's put some more corn in gas. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some of the better jobs around my area are actually uh, ethanol plant people work there. I put I put it in my truck, the E85 or whatever. And it, it, they said it. They said it's supposed to kill your gas mileage, but. My gas mileage sucks in my truck anyway. You know, you know, I'm still getting 16 when I was using it. I don't know. We accidentally filled the boat with it one day. It ran fine. What you got? What happened to him? He got crushed. Got what are these things doing? Not with one of them. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ryan Ingles be says. <laughs> Maybe she didn't shave and she got stung by a thousand bees. <laughs> oh, that's Severe allergic reaction, brother. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Yeah, man. I think I burned up my chubby knees today. <laughs> Got a little heat here. Not so much here, back up in here, but right on the top of the knee. <laughs> Awesome sauce. Yes, sir. 74 people in this chat still. I gotta refresh. That's not right. There, that's more like a 65. <laughs> Good one, Ryan. Good one. Waiting on that. I think I'm going to have to have one. Jen Rasmussen, new sub here, brother. Where you guys fishing tonight? We are on the Mississippi River, Illinois, Iowa. Here we. Uh, this is, I think, it's like the Rock Island pool. In search of giant flatheads, using mostly live bait. We are now sitting here fishing a wreck barge that's been here for a long time, provides a lot of good structure for these fish to live in, and we're trying to pluck them out by their feet, and hold them up by their jaw, and put, just take your picture, that's all we want. Kelly Speaks Out was with me last night. We uh, we landed a 38 pounder. She took amazing pictures. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got a little video up on my little uh, YouTube channel of just the weight, the weight, you know. It's gotta be clout chasing and show the fish we catch, you know, nowadays. But it was an absolute blast. Felt great. Oh, 
Cumberland and the Tennessee River is nice. We might be able to make it to the gas station and get a seal and get some uh, fried chicken out of the dump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Dumpster chicken. Could be a hot cup of coffee in the apple printer. That'd be bad for See if I got any more of this delicious drink left. Save the last few drops. Mmm. Lord have mercy. trying to download an image of my cat. There he is. Yep. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Oh, he's on the ground. Who's out? He's up. Yeah. Oh, no. We're not going to be free. Come out of there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Oh, Gotta find a little crack. Yeah. Yeah. We got down on down, but they just won't come. Watch that rod. Oh, won't come out of the deep water near those crevices.
<laughs> uh, bang bang, worn sock with the nine nine nine, nine fried chicken. Thank you. <laughs> I think we're gonna be hard pressed to find any fried chicken. Dude. William Warner, seven play eight tonight. Not. What do you want to do? I don't know. Go. Like four play mm -hmm. of junk. Either we go anchor somewhere else or uh, we either get. I know. Um, they're in there. And they're in here and they're just not coming out. There's no other way to do one about this, is it? No, not really. Um, so if we go close, we go back, we can drop it. We can drop it. Go back, is there an end to it out there? Yeah, there is. The end to it? There is, but there gets caught in the freaking back under the where the bar is. It's not that far from that bar. Really? Yeah. Uh, no. If we get on the bite it down, Rod. We're good, but it's going to spray the crap out of it. But I will not. I can't see anything go on this side. Get up against the bar. Not even going on. I think we're going to drop back and try to we're going to drop back and try to target this a little bit different. Can possibly be the last move. We're going to see. But the angle that we're at right now, it is not going to happen. Well, I mean, it's going to have to be going, but yeah. Thank you. 
extra. We don't have any extra. Where's that light at for the front? Yeah, and then you got to pull the small rope through that hole. See it? Or untie it. I'm thinking what I want to do is I want to attach there. I'm going to unattach from there. I want to attach there. Can you kill it there? Yeah, I'm going to pull it off. 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 Lots of vibration in the audio. What the hell does that mean? Okay. 
in the 10, 10 5 right now. What's up? Nine nine five. Mm. Now. now it's all messed up. It's forty feet. It's all blanked out. Okay. You about the end of your rope or what? Out of 39 feet. There we go. Now we see something. It's 11, 11, 4, 12. I think that's the end of it because it's showing a little softer stuff on top of that part. Do this it's about the last anchor. Let's try it. Let's let's see what we can get. Hey, there's Bruce Beaver. What's up, buddy?
Yeah, I've never seen a fifth year Smith angle before. I've been. Big fish, huh? Sunfish, thanks for coming in, buddy. Good luck. Good luck tomorrow. Happy Father's Day, too. Everybody. Yep, keep them up. 
Good one. Danny powered that thing down, but he wasn't going to hurt the jerk. Oh, yeah. Another one. This like Harvard Copy. Jeez. Man, he pounded that thing down. Woo! Well, I'm a little bit get the guy. Dude, I'm happy as shit. Get the guy excited. Waiting on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a nice takedown, dude. Ten, uh, that was a great takedown. That's yeah, well, that's a pretty shit. Hold on. Uh, Flathead number nine. Carbon copy, that's the same picture. <laughs> uh, I love these things though. I love these things. Oh yeah. Alright. Let's get one like three times that day. Let's go. Take down. Wait. Take down. Can't, we can't run this many rods here. So we're going to let this one straight down again? Yep. Okay, let's go. Austin Turner, you guys are halfway to the longest fish live stream ever seen on YouTube. <laughs> and we're still catching fish. Ethan, Ethan E says, hey, nice. I thought you maybe uh, you guys sold your catfishing gear and gave up. Never. Come on, man. We need a big one. These little ones are nice to get you going. For the takedown wise, for the any given time. Sean, please tell Epic I said 
Hello. Behind the boat, that's a 12 foot. That's about right. It's 12 foot, but it's also a 20 foot. And I agree. It's about that. Left drive into the 20 foot. Yeah, Austin, we don't care. So just so you know, if your stream is over 12 hours, you won't be able to keep the video on your channel for people to watch later. What? Well, we're living in the now. <laughs> yeah, how, how, how long is it for a while? Right, it's pretty damn close. I mean, it's 11 o'clock now. Yeah. 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 yeah, we're within an hour. We started right about three. We'll give it another 30 minutes and we'll cut it and start it up again. Yeah, we'll make a new stream here in a little bit. We might go back up to that Iowa barge up there and try to uh, anchor in that and see if we can pop a butt big one before we leave. Because we're stupid like that. Yeah, yeah, we are. That's flathead number 10. Dink Bill. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's the little ones that are going around. The little ones that are around, big ones are stinging tight in the cup. That's a nice little flathead right there. One more. What does that make? Ten? That's ten. Ten. Alright. You want the wolf to eat that? Come on. Man, I wish them barges weren't hooked up to the pipe on that barge on Iowa. That would give you a lot of. EX Tiger with the bang. New stream startup funds, ten dollars. Thank you. What's up? It was really weird, almost like the very back of it. 
little farther back. Felt like it Thank you, thank you. Just trying to get it tight to the end. of them and then they're all big bills eight nine ten pounds maybe a couple of them are big yeah i think we got a couple new 12 And that's amazing. Yep. Tony King says up to the hall coming in the next 15 minutes. Let's go. PX Tiger fixing to put some chicken strips and curly fries in the air fryer. Got the munchies, hell yeah. All right, buddy, thank you. Playing for the championship in the morning. Happy Father's Day to you, Jim. You too, brother. Good luck.
number 11. I thought you were big. You just turned it away from me. Look at this. Horses in there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Another flat cat. Took out that door from there. Must have cut himself shaving. <laughs> See you later, buddy. Snapper King says, how's it going, Epic? What's up, Snapper King? We're lighting up the planet. None of them are big, but... What's up, fellas? Are we in the way? No, all right. Okay. You guys just got a gas? We're getting a dump in the heat? Okay. I didn't know if you were going to flip back or what. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I'd really rather catch some monsters, but we've been catching some, you know, 10 pounds here and there. Yeah. Yeah, we still got 66 people watching. Yeah, right, watching, yeah. Oh man, Cody, that sucks. Yeah. Jonathan called, says he blew up his motor, his boat motor. What? Uh, how the hell does that happen? Yeah, I'm on YouTube. Yep. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm on TikTok and YouTube with Epic Captain. So, look that up. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> cool. Yeah, must have injected the, the injection part. Something happened. Ran it through lean or something. I don't know. No, I don't believe it's an old boot. Yeah, Mark, not there on it. Oh, 
Robert James says, come on, hippo. Oh, that's Beep, beep, barge. Barge bike. Usually when they feel a barge from there, it actually speeds up the current underneath it. Something tighter. Makes sense. Yeah. drink cases so bad I wish I was <laughs> <laughs> if, 
with the port. Other weapons. What those bangs got to do? Yeah, yeah. John and other people. A rare day, like it's 11 planets. No, no, nothing over 15. Pretty crazy, yeah. but 11 a planet is pretty awesome, yeah. yeah. It'd be a month to get to 11 planets right <laughs> every day. Oh, yeah. I actually got a little bit of flat in finger. That's nice. We got 58 people still in here, it says. 49 sleeping. 49 are sleeping. Mike, I probably would be too. 58 watching here. It says I started 11 hours ago, so yeah, we'll... Yeah, Terry, it's uh, 78 degrees, it says. PJ, you can't go back with a lick. I think he probably can, Mark. Just what I've heard. I think he's probably pretty good at it. <laughs> And he says, yeah, big ones must be spawning. Maybe. Maybe. You might be right on the head, right, hit the nail on the head on that one. No, it wouldn't be unusual for it to be two weeks in advance with that super warm up that we got. Yeah. That would suck. Except for they would start a couple of weeks earlier. I'm going to pump up one more dart here.
here. We're about to wrap this up. We're giving her hell today. I think we got 11 flatheads today. Nothing over 15 pounds, but flatheads. I think the big our biggest one toward, toward the line, right? Yeah, we had a real big one on, but yeah, we were anchored up on this barge and uh, it didn't work out. And now we're about ready to wrap her up here in a few. We're coming up on 12 hours. Anchored on a lot of nice spots again. Holdem Hook says Happy Father's Day, everyone. I'll probably sleep until at least 8 or 9 tomorrow. I'll get up yeah. and drink coffee and feel like shit. No, you won't. <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get up at 6 like always. Yeah, yeah. You like garbage. Can't even hardly walk. Brain dead. Wiggle. I don't like physically. I, I don't know. Mentally, I I I can feel like I lost like a bunch of IQ points. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I know. I know. And one day I could eat, I could barely string together a sentence. I know. Go, 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 go. Yeah, it's been a good day though. Beautiful day. The sun was pretty intense. I was pretty much over that thing about four o'clock this afternoon when it didn't go down. And then we went over and checked out the shade bike. We couldn't find one there either. There were a lot of bluegills damaged in the making of this movie. Yeah. They were biting and spitting earlier. Awesome, Mark. So then, yeah, that kind of describes the big one there. It kind of doesn't make sense. Those are all juveniles. They probably are. Yeah, they're not ready to. You're doing that. That's probably pretty close to the truth. I know that anything from 75 to 80 degrees, something like that, is in the window. Yeah, but still, you know, for so many years, dude, I never, I never had to worry about it, so we give it one. Shoot, it's Father's Day. There were so many times it was warm like this. I mean, I had back to back, six in the boat, father and son, father and son. Right here. Uh, you know, dude. And your boss is a mother thing and all kinds of hot on the inside or from the day's heat and the sun.
turn on? Yep. Bite me too. What? Yes, I get to the time like that. Boy, bite me too. Yeah. Right now I'm wondering if we can sit over there if we would have got I, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that did Big Slim 91, what's going on? What? Oh, the hook. We are getting at the tail end of our 12 hour fishing marathon. We have 11, 11 flatheads loaded. None of them had much ass. <laughs> They're all. They're a nice little fish, though. They're a nice fish. Back in the spring with all that belly meat. Just got off work, you guys were at this fish when I left earlier, yeah? We caught some more carbon copies. A bunch of nine pounders.
Last is Tim. He's ranging out, folks. Under the barge. Buck William B3 We got 35 people left in there. Just enough to see us back to the ramp. No, no, man. Long one. They got 35 minutes. Oh, chicken on the river rat. Oh. Danny Stone fucking caught a mermaid or something. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Stone's a character, I love that guy, he's awesome. Danny Stone is the least boring person. He's awesome. <laughs> Mark, now, what are y'all eating? Well, they're a Casey's version of a Scotcheroo. And they're like a month and a half old. Not bad. And they have never been refrigerated. They've been in the deck for Look at that. They don't taste as much like a moldy shirt as they should. <laughs> <laughs> no.
got a jack of 61 yet. Well, you can get that ramp done. Mm -hmm. These are these fermented. No, they're it's good. Like, this is like survival food. You could bury this stuff in How like been in a pair of shoes, like at least three weeks. You get them on one of the first trips we did this? Yeah. <laughs> And that's why women live longer than men. Because we'll eat anything. Because we're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We do dangerous oh. shit. We got you should have... Oh my god. Manatee? Yeah. You pounds. showed the people. 68 pound buffalo. Probably. It looked like that. back in his hole. <laughs> You'll next time. Give me another tobacco pouch in my mouth because I need that. Eight milligrams at a time. What do I feel a little funny when I feel it? Do the OD on nicotine. That would give me like I threw up one night. <laughs> I drank about six, 1,600 beers at work. <laughs> and that guy going down the road. And, you know, right when I first started quite a, quit smoking, and I just yeah. kept on putting it in my mouth and right, right, talking and drinking some beer. Oh, yeah, you got buzzed up. I got going down the interstate. I only had, like, one beer. Yeah. Yeah. Too much nicotine, it made me too too. Andy's mermaid. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it's the ex tiger if you see that. I said, wonder what Danny Stone's doing catching a freaking mermaid or something by now. <laughs> a he's catching a 70 pound blue. The next time I see him, he's catching a, a 70 pound uh, uh, alligator, alligator snapper. snapper. One time I look at watch him, he's fishing on something he's called the couch. Gerald Hanna. <laughs> he's going to get. Stanley's character. Slow Danny Stone. He's awesome. Okay, I think they got a full staff over there on the Mississippi River rats. Do they? They got. Uh, I think they're. Uh, I think they're doing giveaways and everything else. Yeah. You guys are over here slumming on our channel. <laughs> <laughs> team with us today and watching us That's do it. True. They all really did it works. together. Yeah. Look, your Christmas presents are almost done. Awesome. <laughs> do you use any of them now? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I got one on one with it. I found those. So those, those pink catfish ones with the, the smaller gauge to them. Yeah. That are sharper than shit. Alright. That's what I got that fish on last night. He wasn't going to help me. That's right here. I saw a bunch of them over there. Oh, over yeah. There. Oh, there's a ton of them. Good luck, Bennett. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Been all awesome. friends, Romans, countrymen. Yep. I think we are going to cut this off. It's been a journey. It's been an adventure. It has it's been, been fun with y'all. Once again, I thank everyone for all the super chats to help us go on more epic adventures. Yeah. We got 181 likes, thumbs up. We're gonna wind them up and get on the road. We got about an hour and a half ride home. Yep, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Relax tomorrow. Make somebody else do all the grilling, chill out, crack a beer. Thanks for hanging with us. Y'all dedicated. Yep. Oh, Lord have mercy. Nope. See you guys. Later, everybody. Thanks again.